What's going on? I am Nando. Uh, ah, no, ah, ah, piss. <laughs> wow, sounds like you had a great experience there. Huh, I wish you were dead, fucker. And it, and this is mostly nitpicking, a podcast where every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Woohoo! <laughs> <Yes, laughs> this week, we got a movie. Uh, that is the movie of the year. One of the movies of the year. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Where would you put this? I think this? it definitely deserves a superlative for yeah. something movie of the year. Well, you got this. You got like Madam Web. You got, um, I don't know. What else is at that level by now? It's tough because, you know, this I would have. year? Yeah. Other movies that are notoriously I'm- not great. Um. I, well, I don't know if it's Wolverine. No, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> liar. I I think that Lying it may you. yet to happen, but you know, Craven could certainly hit this Craven. level. Yeah, I Harold and the Purple Crayon. Uh, I think oh, seems to oh, be Harold and the level. Purple Crayon is up there. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot I of mean, that this year. I the I Watchers. Keep back up. If oh yeah. Well, I was about to say if, mm. but I I do think this movie deserves a little more oh, of yeah. a special place, right? I, if is. I, I, great compared to this <laughs> yeah i well, well we'll talk about being appreciative of things after having seen yeah this. <laughs> rebel uh, moon oh yeah, rebel moon yeah. might be there which one which movie <laughs> and then which cut and yeah i um yeah we, we'll get to it but before that i have some um news speaking of madam webb um these are two sony news is the first one the next spider verse movie is not going to come out for another perhaps two years apparently according <gasps> to um whoops the, it was supposed to yeah. come out this year. That's supposed to come out yeah, this year. it's supposed to come out, like, within the next couple months. hmm And they said it had been taken off the schedule for a little while, but we didn't know what that meant. I mean, we knew what it meant. People that even checked once were like, oh, yeah, they're not going to make this movie. But <laughs> other, they didn't say it until just today. And um, I don't even think they officially said it. I think somebody said it for them. Uh, but, yeah, it's kind of a bummer, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, those movies are good and it's good when good movies are in the theater is, I, I guess the biggest mm-hmm. thing is like, it's going to be so far apart. I mean, it won't matter if it'll watch the, the, you know, part one before seeing it, but yeah, will Spider-Man's voice have dropped? Will he, will he instead of sounding like <laughs> little Peter Parker, will he sound like an old man? <laughs> Maybe. Stop it, Miles. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's just a shame, but you know, I hope it's good. I hope Sony can continue to do the one thing it's good at. Make this specific movie animated mm. version. Yeah. So that's my hope. How about you, Diggins? Where are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think we had even discussed when we did our Spider-Verse pod, where we were like, this one's not coming out next year, though, right? Yeah. Like, it's not. <laughs> uh, so I can't say I'm surprised. And I mean, listen, if they make this one in a way that doesn't crunch their animators to death this time, mm. I think that's all to the good. I think so, that is wishful thinking. The animators <laughs> will not still be crunched. I think I that mean, this yes. comes out in two years has animator crunch worked into it or something. Mm. That's my guess. Probably. Probably they are still getting crunched. But hey, listen, um, giving them more time, I think, is only good. Yeah, I mean, you know, they can they could work on it and then maybe there'll be another strike in the middle and they can get their contracts to be fair or something. <laughs> you know, stuff like that happens a lot. Can't wait for that. Animation yeah. Guild is uh, in the middle of negotiations, I think. Oh, yeah. okay. Very good. Because I know what it's the one that's striking now. Video game something? Video something game like voice actors are striking. So, okay, yeah. So that's great. We appreciate that. Um I mean, do we do we appreciate video game voice actors? Hmm. Hmm. Uh. I yes. So. I think we yeah. do. How would I know what my cool characters sound like? Because you know, back in the day, you're playing, you know, Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time right. on N64, and you're just guessing. Because back then, all we had that was hey, hey, right? Ha, Does that include ha, ha. somebody? Like, is that guy a voice actor? I guess it's his voice, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's the yeah. game? Was it the Lego games or what are the games? No. What's the game where people speak like this? 
Animal, Animal Crossing. Crossing? Yeah. Do you yeah. think those guys are voice actors or do you think it's just like if you hit someone I, with a hammer and then they make a sound, does that count as acting? I So I believe that uh, the, the Animal Crossing stuff is like um, computer generated because actually, oh. do you know how it works? I've never – no, I've, I've so little information about Animal so, Crossing. I, I think this is right, and someone will correct me on this. I believe it is, like, the text-to-speech letters. So, like, the word the would be, like, T-H-E, but then they yeah. speed it up to, like, a million times. So, oh. it's like – So, that's that's what the words in Animal Crossing are. Interesting. So, yeah. Isn't it, though? Kind of. Almost. Uh, I'm pretty <laughs> psyched for it. Um but yeah, they, so they got it. They figured it out. It's just use the computer. But I guess somebody has to pronounce those words originally, right? Or something? I mean, it's it a writer's text to right. speech. Yeah. Yeah. But who's speech? You know? Well, this Some is... lady 20 years ago in Utah or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. It, it, it's a book A. Whoa. B. Don't, don't give them these free letters, C. DJ. <laughs> Unless you guys want the rest of that alphabet. You're going to make a game with only words with A, B, and C about cabs and stuff? And then you're going to have to get more letters. Um, yeah, it's and weird. The that only way to out- get that is on the Mostly Nitpicking Patreon. Yeah. yeah. Secret Patreon no one can use because it's secret. And, That's right. Um, we refuse to let anyone give us money. Yeah, because we're so shy. We don't want to share our nudes with everybody, you know? Like we yeah. that's, Link in bio. Link yeah, in bio. Link in bio, but you don't get password. No one does. It's just for us. Yeah. Um, just to share them around. Share those around and us reading the letters. Those are the two things in the most <laughs> significant time. Uh, Sometimes we do both at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very frequently. Certain letters. Um, we all know which letters. Um, oh yeah, the funny ones. The, the funny ones. ones. Yeah. Oh my god, that was a great fan. Uh, was that Phantasmus? The one where the Q was like a punk letter. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was that great. Is, Super that is Phantasmus. So funny. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the Spider Verse thing because the other day, about a week ago, because I have a problem, um, I follow very closely the Marvel Legends announcements for all the figures and stuff, and they had that a, is a problem. It is a problem. What, they had a remind me what Marvel Legends is. That's like kind of like the base action figure, but like not like oh, the okay. giant ones or as big as Barbie and have two colors and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Those target ones that are like humongous. Oh, and it's all oh, the okay. guys just standing like this. And it's like, yeah. who's that okay. for? So it's not those. And it's not, you know, the little ones. It's like the ones that cost like 20 bucks. Um, Cause like it's a problem if you're buying those, but it's a problem problem if you're buying the ones that each cost like a hundred dollars, which is another thing. But anyway, that's um, true. So they put out like waves. They're like, oh, it's a wave for Deadpool Wolverine or whatever. Uh, they also had a Spider-Verse wave come out. And they've had Spider-Verse waves come out before. But it's all just guys from the other movies but different colors. And it's like, this is because they told them there would be a new one that would be out now. Mm. And then there's not. And they had to go, uh, uh, what if this <laughs> one was purple? And that's what they did. <laughs> so good for them. Is and- is that the same as the um the McDonald's toys that were like the Captain yeah. Falcon Brave New Worlds. That I was guess like a few months ago. Yeah, it would be like if that was that, but instead they painted them all to be the colors of minions, and then just named them like <laughs> Wing Minion, Ruth Minion, and stuff. Because that's kind of <laughs> what it is. Um, because it's like, because this would be like if they just gave us all the new characters, and they were like, "You figure out who you know Robo Spider is." We don't know. You'll find out in three years. <laughs> So far, no Robo Spider on the horizon, though. I don't know. I'm only buying three of them, though, so that's good restraint for me. No, I'm buying two of them because uh, Miles, the the Prowler Miles, was not available before, and then the uh, Spider Man uh, Indian uh, Spider Man, pretty good looking Spider Man, if you ask me. Oh, okay. Like, I think that design's pretty cool. Anyway, you guys, other thing. Speaking of Spider Man, they're making a Craven movie again. Uh, and by that, I mean they did a bunch of reshoots. Um, because uh, Madam Web bombed. We shared this. What? Di- yeah, I know. Well, yeah, Madam Web was one. It's the first bomb the Sony's ever had. So, like, they really thought they had the formula down. Uh, and then they accidentally, you know, fucked up Madam Web. And then they're like, we got to, you know, back to formula, as they would say in the Spider Man movies. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they said they, they, they delayed it twice or at least three times, maybe, because they, um, wanted to do a good job instead of a bad job <laughs> don't we all commendable yeah. attitude 
I think it's pretty brave that they said that, but then the article framed it as that it was like they saw Madam Web and the reaction to Madam Web, and they were like, we got to redo this. As if they were like, fuck, they don't like shitty movies. We got to make it a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I don't think that's don't what... they just accept our shitty movies? Yeah. These idiots. We thought we could just make the flashing lights go on the screen, and apparently they want character arcs and stuff. This is bullshit. Yeah. So it's the Borderlands saw, people, right? We saw all those DC movies and most of those Marvel movies, and we're like, I thought they would just <laughs> eat up whatever slop we could throw in the trough, those stupid little piggies. Yeah. That and, like, you know, just put a camera on like a famous person and then have them put on a costume for one second. And then you can put that in the trailer. That's usually pretty good, you know, but yeah, apparently yeah, yeah. you need more than that. And, um, we'll see what it is in Craven, but I got high hopes. Do you, what do you guys want from Craven besides just that bit where he says, uh, I'm the rhino at the end. And then we don't I see hope Russell Crowe and his incredible accent. Yep. Yeah. I want that. I want more of the um the the scene from the trailer where the spiders come down from the trees. Oh I yeah! I want more spiders. That's I, definitely that's something the, the Sony crew. AI told them to put in the movie before they decided <laughs> to make the people write it was spider spider tease. If there's and one then, thing that Madam Web should have taught us, it's that spiders make all movies better, especially yeah. if yeah. there's a vaguely spider related person and you're like, what's this about? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting because this comes out after Venom and the Venom movies are also traditionally not very good, but they do tend to make money. So I almost kind of understand what they were saying, if that's what they were saying. Like, you know, you don't you, like Venom's not good and you guys still like those. So why why would we think we have to make it good? <laughs> yeah, but, that's um, the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I can understand their confusion. Yeah, I um, I, I feel for them. <laughs> I mean... They, I, I, I do and I don't because they should be able to figure out that the reason we like Venom is because Tom Hardy is putting a ridiculous amount of effort in for no reason. Yeah. And the camp level is like ratcheting it up. And like, that's why we like it in theory. But like, it's, we don't like it because you have like uh, Las Aranas jumping around trees and stuff. No, we love that. Um, that part was great. That was okay, one of so the 80 parts of that was actually good. Okay, so they will be in Craven, is what you're saying. They're going to oh take us Aranias and put them in Craven. I don't see why not. They protect the Amazon. He's like more of a Sahara <laughs> guy, but why wouldn't he go to the Amazon? There's animals there. Do you think that Craven will, halfway through his movie, just fuck off to Peru for a few yeah. seasons? <laughs> mm -hmm. Learn the origin. Well, he, he knows his, his dad, and I guess he knows what happened to his mom, but unless he learns like... Well. Does he well, know why his mom died, though, or something? Oh, There's flashbacks to be told. He was researching spiders in the Amazon. Researching lions in the Amazon or right, something. Right. I guess which that would make more sense. They were eating all the spiders, so somebody had to figure out what was going on there. You know, um, It's going to be a big one uh, because it comes out like right around Christmas. So, yeah. you know, it's like the Antichrist or something, but a movie <laughs> instead of a guy. You know, they like, did. You they think did it's say Christmas, that, it's that, that you know when the second coming happens, we will not recognize him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's because of all the reshoots. You know, <laughs> we thought we would, but now it's like they've changed so much about character development. Different guy. That yeah, right now it. that is. How about this? Here's a question. It's currently slated for December 13th. That is the release date. Um, Just what do you it. think? Do you think there's any possibility that, that changes or do you think at this point it's like the movie's going out, we're spending, you know, we're getting this out of our system so we can do something else? Oh, they want that Christmas money. They're definitely, yeah, like if it's not done, they're just going to cludge together some monstrosity like Madam Web and throw it out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is odd because Madam Web was under no such time crunch. Like I do understand the like impetus for like we have to get this in for the holiday season. We have to have to have to. Um, but yeah, that wasn't true for Madam Web. I don't think oh, they yeah. can just scatter shot throw three movies out during the holiday season. Like fuck it, Venom, Madam Web, crazy. Like I feel like with Madam Web, it was like one of these has to come out in you know March or, or April or something. And also sometimes it's just a matter of budget. It's like we've already spent so much money on this. We just yeah. get something out there to try to recoup something. Yeah, and Madam right. Web, Madam Web got bought. Like also got moved back a bunch. So it was probably originally in a different spot. Um, it was its time. 
It was, its was time. It, time. it was Valentine's Day, right? Mm-hmm. That was the Valentine's Day release. So. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. The anti-Valentine, as it were. <laughs> um, much like the Antichrist. Some like, uh, some have called it the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a very popular name. I don't for think it. those people are wrong. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, who's... Do you think this can, this is it for, not like this is it for Ariana DeBose, because I really like Ariana DeBose, but between this Argyle and Wish, it's like, man, Ariana DeBose's agent needs to get shot into the sun or something, because this is not, <laughs> it's not going well. Or is it like, stick to your lane, and your lane is Broadway, yeah, and that's then, fine. But that's Wish, totally fine. Wish should totally be like, right up her alley. Disney bullshit musical? Like, yeah, it's true. But I mean, that's, I guess it's not her fault. Maybe I mean, it's her agent's say, fault. I wouldn't say any of these are her fault, especially not I think it's Argyle. I think Argyle was her in. fight. <laughs> nah, nah, I think Argyle, she kept she kept showing up on the set and going, yeah, we should have a bit where they change actors midway. And Matthew Vaughn was like, I don't know. We already did that in the last fight scene. She was like, do it again and again and again and again. <laughs> I was like, I think people are tired of it. And um, she actually wouldn't let it go. But. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of hers. I like her in that Shemega Dune show. I think she's great. Uh, and West Side Story. That's right. She's in West Side Story. But um, yeah, it's not looking good. <laughs> I don't know. She's Calypso. That's cool. That's like Craven's girlfriend. So cool. Wow. You guys, speaking of movies with girlfriend. Uh, well, no, actually, no. That's not something girl in this movie. Girlfriend. There's yeah, girlfriend. Speak, speaking of movies with friends that are girls, speaking of movies with, uh, do we have any Broadway actors in this? I don't, got fucking uh, roped into this. So. They got a lot of fancy Did, actors roped into it, but. I was going to say, it would have to be, um, like, uh, oh my God, why am I blanking? Jamie Lee Curtis. It'd have to be like a Jamie Lee Curtis type, right? Perhaps, I yeah. Think, but I don't even. I mean, even if she has done some Broadway stuff, I would not call Jamie Lee Curtis a Broadway actor. Yeah, if anything, it would have to be like Florian Malathalu or something or whatever. The guy that plays the big giant man. Yeah, we'd have to find out that he was like the Phantom of the Opera or some shit. Uh, or like, Ooh. you know. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's um, exciting. But yeah, I don't I don't think there are. Maybe little tiny Tina. You know what? She was, she's, she's probably one of those. Ariana kids. Greenblatt? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she did some Broadway thing when she was like five, you know? So she was in, cool. in the Heights, the movie. Yeah, there we go. And what am I talking about? Of course, Jack Black is kind of that, right? He's like kind oh. of almost, you know, School of Rock. That's like I a movie. Guess. But Did he was he in the Broadway version? I don't think so. No, he was not. No. But I think he, he used it. And he should have been instead of this, maybe. But, the, you know, he would have had to do like a touring version. But I still think he would appreciate it. Maybe he was, no one should have been in this. He was going to do a tour this year, but then he decided to be weird about it or something. I don't know. No, do, you don't know what happened with that? I do know what happened with it, but I feel like he should maybe, he should have I don't know, it. just be cool. Yeah. Well, it wasn't him. Was it, was it Kyle Gass who did Well, the thing? Kyle yeah. Gass is the person who said something, but Jack Black didn't have to be weird about it. Mm. I see. I see. I think Jack Black could have. I think we could have totally gotten away if Jack Black was just like, ha ha. All right. Next song. It would have been fine. I don't think anybody would have really cared. As much right. as I think Kyle sees his, or what's his name? Kyle Gass? Yeah. yeah. As much as I think Kyle Gass is like usually a mover and shaker when it comes to world events. Um, <laughs> I feel like if, if Jack Black That's was true. able to kind of divert that attention, that would have been pretty good for him. Um, yeah. But yeah, speaking of, I mean, speaking of Jack Black, speaking of Jack Black video game characters, what a, what a gamut he has spun from fucking... Mario to this, you know, the best and to the worst. Minecraft yeah, movie coming up. Oh my god, yeah, where he's playing adult Steve, it seems like, or something. I don't know. Yeah. That's what there were pictures that got released recently. Um they looked weird, but it seems like they're real. Anyway, uh let's talk about Borderlands, you guys. They made a Borderlands movie. Who's they? Oh. It's a lot of people. We'll get to it. Um well, yeah, they made a, uh, they made a movie that they wrote the name Borderlands on and gave it to the oh, okay. theaters, that you know. Sense. It says yeah. Borderlands. I feel like the the word Borderlands comes up at least once. Uh I don't know if they say it. It these does. are the Borderlands. They don't say Borderlands in the video game Borderlands. No, That's I, how like yeah. It's Pandora, and it's like the wasteland, and it's yeah. But I don't know why the video games are called Borderlands. To be honest, it's, it's, it's not like a secret. When they get in the vault. It's like, well, 
finally. Yeah, what are Do you think they were going to call it? Yeah. Do you, maybe like, you know, New Jersey or something. You know, maybe it's right outside our window. Probably. I feel like maybe, because this, when did the first one come out? Oh, nine. Do you think it was right before before Avatar? And then Avatar came out and they were like, wait, we're making this movie about the planet of Pandora. And they were like, fuck, we were going to call our game Pandora because it takes place on the planet of Pandora. Yeah, that's true. Well, you got to come up with a new name then. I think it was right around the same time. time. Yeah, right. It's got to be back when we were going Pandora crazy. (laughs) Everybody was like, (laughs) everyone was like, what's up with her and her box? yeah that's right and the weird <laughs> the weird rare squares and shit that movie man avatar Ugh. i don't here's the thing james jim cameron jim cameron as we call him Jimmy is doing C. some sort of press tour yeah i assume it has something to do with aliens because he probably produced it like the new one and they asked him like hey why is your why do your new 4k movies suck and he's like because <laughs> you're a bunch of nerds who give a shit about what the 4k movies look like and James Cameron, he used AI to like make all the 4K movies look like shit, and uh, he's an asshole. And I was like, he, what a jerk. And then I, re- I remembered that he kept trying to drown his actors that one time. So I'm like, <laughs> he's been a jerk for a while, you know. Yeah. He's probably this probably should have been my first, um, but I do love him. I, I, I mean, listen, I true lies. I think he is a jerk, and I think using AI to like, uh whatever he did to make them 4k, whatever, all that stuff is bad. Shouldn't do it. I do think people who care a lot about really, really high end graphical fidelity should be told to calm down sometimes. I mean, I, that's definitely true. If he had just made a bad, bad one, I'd be like, that's fair. Have you ever seen the 4k transfer of, um, of true lies? I've never seen true lies it, period. What? Such a good movie. The tra- they, for whatever reason, they used AI and it like smoothed out everything. I'm gonna um, open the image. I'm gonna just put this in including, our chat so you can see it. But like, including Arnold. Oh my God, he's just like Gumby. Yeah, he's he just looks some so good. smooth stick of a man. <laughs> this is this is what um, the left is the real version. Like the original and the right is what the 4K transfer looked like. So besides fucking up all the colors, you can see it also kind of like smooths everyone's creases and their faces out and it looks all weird in ai it, it, if only we could see uh their fi- their fingers and how there's like yeah. 10 different fingers added to their hands yeah that scene where he does thumbs up there's two thumbs it's just like a secret <laughs> extra thumb why um, do why that's a, why do people why does hollywood think we hate colors now i don't understand i don't know also, well, Hollywood does, I, and the computer that does all of Hollywood's job for it does. So, <laughs> algae you know. rhythm, I, yeah, <laughs> algae rhythm does. I don't know if you could tell, but it, it fucks up the ear too. The ear placement's like way too high. Um, mm. Ears is another one that like AI can't nail down. E- ear, ears and fingers for some reason. I mean, they're weird. To be fair to AI, that's true. It yeah. could just be a little hole, but in it's AI's just defense, thing. yeah, fingers and ears, awful. Yeah, but speaking of movies about uh, with Jamie Lee Curtis and stuff, let's talk about uh, Borderlands <laughs> One, the land of the Borderlands uh, Chronicles, or whatever it'll eventually be called when they make ten of them. I was gonna say, um, we gotta say Borderlands One because there's a bunch more of these uh, coming. Tales uh, from the Borderlands Saga or something. We got to talk about Borderlands One. Uh, you guys, this is the big movie of the year, like we said. Do you want to? Do you remember? Because it's not a zero, but what is the Rotten Tomato score for this? In Was it digits? up to four? I think it's. Yeah, a, I think like it got that. all the way up to like nine. Oh, get out! Well, uh, oh, well, yeah. well, people out there, p- sympathy votes. Yeah, nine, nine, all the way up to nine. Some people really, uh, mm, yeah, trying to juice that score. Uh, let's see, can we? F- I don't think you're going to look for some critical reviews that are positive. Okay. Here's one. John Mendelson from CBR. It's not as bad as you think, but it's not good either. <laughs> Six Ooh, out of 10. That's high praise. All right. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's find another one. Uh, Tony Ribeiro, free press journal, India. Visually, the film does a commendable job replicating the cell shaded look of the games, but the stylistic achievement only serves to highlight the film's overall emptiness. 2.5 out of five fresh. I don't know what this means. What these, nice. uh, these ratings even mean? Oh, here we go. 
<laughs> Fausto Fernandez for Fotogramas. Mm. Uh, Borderlands is not a good movie, but it is a prime example of how intelligently non-intelligent life existed and exists in unintelligent science fiction, where the misses are more interesting than the occasional hits. Now, in fairness to how much that sentence didn't make sense, this was originally written in Spanish. And if this is, and I'm sure Rotten Tomatoes did like a Google translator or an AI translator or something. They love Fascinating. it. Fascinating. Well, here's, love it. here's the only one that matters. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the critic Grace Randolph. She's notoriously I, weird. I wasn't until uh, this happened and our Discord informed me. Although they chose yeah. to start with, she gave a bad review to this Super Mario Brothers movie. And I was like, so she's usually right about things? Right, yeah, that is. <laughs> she's And I think like so, there's some critics that I just don't agree with, whatever, but she has a very strange, first of all, she loves Zack Snyder. She's like his greatest mm-hmm. fan and has been known to post a lot of scoops that don't end up happening, including one about Birds of Prey that the director had to be like, no, this one's making it up. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, she liked Argyle, so yeah, she is cool. Liked Rebel Moon and Child of Fire. Uh, listen, this isn't liked wish. Okay, listen, this person, something's wrong with this one. Um, didn't like Killers oh, of the Flower Moon. Uh, Too long. Was yeah. that her complaint? Yeah, Less what kind of fellas, idiot more moron gangs of New York complains that a movie is too long? DJ. I, <laughs> yeah. I agree, Diggins. That's insane. No one should mm-hmm. do that. There is Killers almost the no was context the making the film a frustrating watch that offers more questions than answers. Good point, you know? Way to go. She didn't like Maestro, so that's cool. Didn't like Oppenheimer. A misfire for Nolan. Too talky, and like many of his films, lacks emotion. The story is hard to follow and unfair to history, but the film looks good with what? some good performances, even if most of the characters are unlikable. Also, yeah, not a good yeah. use of IMAX. What a crazy thing. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, all right. This isn't just the Grace Randolph is wrong about everything hour, but... So she gave Oppenheimer a negative review, and this is she doesn't give numbers, so it's just like positive, negative, negative for Oppenheimer, ninety three percent for everybody else. So yeah, on the other side of history, um, and I'm going to read this Much a like different one. Yeah, and speaking of um, speaking of uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, solid family entertainment, especially for Halloween, Haunted Mansion. Lucky Stanfield and Jared Leto are the standouts, along with the production aye, design. Aye, aye. Surprisingly macabre, which is a plus. Fans of the ride will have the most fun. I guess. Not true. Yeah, I watched you know. share the ride and did not have the That's most fun. True. Fans of the ride will have the most something. <laughs> uh, but anyway, anyway, Sustain. one of she was, I believe, the first positive review for Borderlands, and her review reads: yes. this. "I've never played the games, but I get a kick out of Blanchett starring in a movie like this and doing a great job. I do wish the script had been adjusted better to accommodate her age. Blanchett fans will enjoy this. Not sure about anyone else. <laughs> so yeah, if you like Kate Blanchett." Doing a job in a movie that the script does not work very well with, this is for you. Think it's right, you're a Blanchett fan? fan? Of course I'm a Blanchett fan. I appreciate all all good actors. Then we'll have to see how you feel during your review. Yeah. Yeah. You better say nice things about Kate Blanchett. And um, before we get to that, we have to do the game, the IMDb Beats and Spelling Bee game, which I'm so excited because I get to be in charge of. Um, For the first time in years. What a week. Yeah, you finally got it. So long. It's been so long, but I think the I think this is good. I think this is like I'm glad maybe I even planned this, you know, losing week after week after week and then winning so that I don't have to do this one because this (laughs) one's really funny. But before we get to that, this is called the IMDb Bees and Spelling Bee, and I'm going to uh, give our fine uh, co-hosts, Diggins and DJ, uh, a chance to guess the IMDb summary that is on IMDb.com for the movie Borderlands. Uh, and I'm sure people are wondering, how did they even come up with the movie Borderlands uh, summary at all? Well, it's actually, uh, it's quite simple. Um, back in ancient Sumeria, uh, there were a set of tablets uh, that were carved from stone, like most tablets. Uh, it'd be funny if it was like, no, carved from styrofoam, a bunch <laughs> of styrofoam tablets. Because uh, they saw it and were like, this is probably for tablets. And we were like, no, this is for shipping things. But the uh, ancient Sumerians, they found some tablets and they carved them. And it's been a very long time. They've been just sitting around in the desert. Um, but Mr. The Great Explorer, Edmund IMDb, was a man who was trying to find the pyramids or something. But then people found those and he was like, fuck, I got to find something else. So he went digging around in ancient Sumeria, wherever that is now. And he found these tablets and he went, 
This is the IMDb summaries, you guys. This is valuable. I'm good at finding stuff. And no one's been able to translate the tabloids except for him. And he keeps them hidden in a little box. But every so often, he opens the box and reads the tablets to us. And we go, I guess that is the summary for Borderlands. Um, And we just kind of have to take his word for it. But, you know, why would he lie to us? He hasn't lied to us before. And um, he did find the tablets, which is pretty impressive. But no one's seen them. But they they are tablets. So, you know, just kind of imagine. Put put it together in your mind. so this is Borderlands, you guys. I, I gotta it. admit, I really wasn't expecting that to go in the Mormonism direction. It, they they got a couple things right, and John IMDb <laughs> probably watched that one episode of South Park and went, I think I see what I can do with this. I can use Mormonism. Or maybe not, you know? Maybe the Mormons took the IMDb direction. Uh, it's possible. Could be. Uh, or maybe maybe this is a Mormon website. How would we even know? Underwear? Is it is secret underwear? Is in like the source code or something? I don't know. A handshake? They got a lot of handshakes in that one. Does it know about soaking? Another soaking reference, finally. (laughs) Yeah. Just disgusting. (laughs) Disgusting, disgusting. That's something they could have said in this movie if it was cool, you know? Instead of poop, they could have said, like, let's go soak. And you would have been (laughs) like, this is a real sicko movie. That would have been funny. What if that's all the psycho was talking about? (laughs) Instead of like grunting and saying like, ooh, me strong. It was just like, soak time yet? And everybody was like, not yet, psycho. (laughs) Maybe one of these days. Um, But yeah. Uh, Manifest in Nando. Be the change you want to see in the world. I mean, maybe in Borderlands too. You know, we'll see. Uh, But Borderlands has this IMDb uh, summary. It is funny. Um, I think you guys are going to enjoy it when you hear it. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's wrong. It's got like, you know, some, it, it makes some claims that I wouldn't say are particularly true. Uh, but I would say they're all matters of opinion and like kind of, you know, maybe talking certain things up that don't quite uh, deliver. But as far as like getting a big plot point wrong or something like that, I think it more or less gets it right. Um, oh, it's okay. not incredibly long. And yeah, I think I think there's a good chance one of you will get it. If not, I have a tiebreaker or two. So um, Diggins, I believe, since DJ was in charge last week, that means you get to choose this week whether you want to go first or second. Uh, I'm going to go first, actually. Oh, Even though I don't okay. have Let something me. ready. Because I like to live dangerously. No, definitely want to do that. And that's like what they would do in the Borderlands at first, you know? Mm. That's true. They would live so dangerously. You can tell um, because they all die at the end. One assumes. One assumes. Okay, yeah. so. I didn't make it to the end, so you guys are going to have to tell me how it goes. <laughs> what, did you um, fall asleep like DJ usually does? Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Spoiler. Was... <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. It's only an hour 40 right, minutes Diggins. long, DJ. It's barely longer than you think movies should be. Time the dilation. Are dark and my seats are comfy. Certain things feel longer, even if they're the right the, the length they should be. It's almost like it's not about the length; it's about the pacing. Hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, no disagreements here. That's what she says. Remember those jokes? That's something Borderlands would appreciate. I'm kind of amazed it doesn't this. have one. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. How Deadpool had a he's right behind me, isn't he? You know, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, they worked in some cliches. But yeah, support Elaine. Stiggins, what do you got? Okay. So, um, the badass bounty hunter Lilith teams up with a crew of, uh, teams up with a crew including, uh, stoic soldier Roland, uh, explosives loving, uh, tiny Tina. And the and the fast talking loud mouth claptrap to go on an epic journey uh across the crazy world of Pandora to find uh a vault full of alien technology. Okay. DJ? I think I'm gonna go a different slightly different route. Alright. Um a group of unlikely heroes must team up to rescue a uh, girl in captivity to unlock the mysterious vault of Pandora containing mystical treasure. Okay. 
I'm going to say Nigel, you did incredibly well. Uh, DJ had like one more nice. correct word than Diggins, but um, it's not enough. Um, too in, bad. in fact, you know what? I think Diggins also probably did say this word, just not in the context that uh, that DJ did. I like DJ's better. I will say the one word you got right, both of you got right, um, was the word team. Uh, Use the word team to describe these people. So let me do a couple tiebreakers, and depending on how you do, I'll figure out who's the winner because I think these might be like you might get it in one or two. Um, what word is used to describe the team? Give me one word. It's an adjective. Comes right before the word team. In uh, the summary. In the summary, yeah. Uh, what was the one I used? Dysfunctional. I know, but, no, but like that kind of word. Yeah, that's a good, good guess. DJ. Uh, ragtag. That's it. Ragtag. Very good. So one <clears throat> point for DJ in this Oops. tiebreaker palooza. Damn. Um, Oops. but Oops. that's not the end of it because there's other ones. Okay. Here's another question. First, I'm going to let Mortimer into the office, but uh, oh, well, not him. first. I'm going to ask you this question, and then I'm going to let him in. So <laughs> this this uh, rev- uh or not review this um uh, summary starts with a uh you know clause or phrase or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can guess what it is. Uh, neither of you said it. Um, starting with digging, just want to take a guess at the clause that begins this summary. Based on the hit video game series. Correct. So it is it is actually based on the best selling video game, but yeah, that is uh, so that is why I think should, I, I said like should have gave me a crack. Should have gave me a crack. I mean, I, I think that was good enough. Um I know. But I, yeah. I, but I would have said something similar. Sure. Yes. The um one, one, so one. yeah, it's based on the best selling video game. Um yeah. I don't think there's really anything else here in the summary that's worth mentioning. So I'll just read it to yeah. you and then we'll move on to the next thing. Based on the best selling video game, this all star action adventure follows a ragtag team of Ugh. misfits on a mission to save a missing girl who holds the key to imaginable, un- unimaginable power. Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, DJ An mentioned imaginable the missing power. girl. You could probably yeah. imagine. I can it. imagine this power. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's within you reason. both got. Yeah, you know, I mean, considering what it is, anyone could have imagined that, I think. Uh, you could have thrown some, you know, magnetic words on on the microwave or whatever, and those that would have described the power in a way. Um, I so I have a couple of trivia's that I think are pretty funny. I I want to ask one that I think is the most important. It is about this movie, um, to some extent, and it's just a question that I think Diggins might know. So I'm a little worried that um, that DJ. Uh, I'm not like worried for DJ, but um, that's fine. Worried for me. Yeah, uh, I think I think you should only ask questions that uh, I might know. I mean, you know, maybe maybe we will. Um, maybe you'll both. Maybe you'll love it. Uh, but this is something that was on the IMDb page for the for the movie, so that's why I think like depending on who has spent the most time on it, it may be may be obvious. Um, but okay. Um, uh. What was the thing I was saying? Um, Kate Blanchett. Explain why she joined this movie in an interview. I'm just going to get you guys some broad... Uh, I'm, you'll narrow it down. I'll give you points as you get closer. What was Kate Blanchett's excuse for doing this movie? She gave two very specific reasons why she, might, why she did it. Um, I feel like there's one really obvious answer, and that's probably not it. It's probably right, the actual like, reason, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's what she but she said. wouldn't say that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they I do just she... say it. Yeah, sometimes they totally say it. Oh, but... yeah. But yeah. As they should, by the way. As um, they should. I'm going to go with one of them is that one of her kids really loves the game. Good guess, but incorrect. I don't know if she has any kids. Um, I don't know either, but that was going to be my guess because it's always to be the go-to. That is a very good guess, yeah. Um, DJ, why did Kate Blanchett make this movie? I Okay, I'm going to see how broad this goes. I'm going to say, like, she... Something with, like, a shooting schedule where this movie squarely fit in, like, a convenient shooting schedule. So it's like she was doing a movie... And then, like, this movie came up, and it was, like, right in the middle, and then another movie, because maybe another movie she wanted to do instead of this didn't fit around her other, you know, movie schedules. 
That's a very good. Like, there, there's, a, there's a good possibility that that's why, but that is not the reason she gave. The stated, okay. Yeah, in the interview, Diggins, do you want to take another shot at it? Uh, she said she's never had a chance to be like a big action star, and she wanted to give that a shot. Mmm, that's like she says something in that vein, but I'm gonna say that's not. Can I so can I can I amend she's... it slightly sure. with that knowledge? Yeah. She said that she wants there to be more opportunities for older women to be big action stars. And she liked that That's this really was the thing she could do. That's a good question or a good, good response. But no, uh, she did say the gunslinging stuff was very fun. But that is not one of the two reasons that it is in here that she did it. Um, I'm going to give DJ one more shot and then I'm going to tell you what they both are because I don't think you'll get them. But they're pretty fun. Uh, so DJ, either either one, the one that's kind of believable or the one that's insane. Uh, so... You know, I have an insane one. Okay. Um, she. It doesn't. Ah, fuck it. She was like, you know, uh, I, I, <laughs> I was gonna be like, this isn't my guess, but it's like I just got drunk and I was like, let's do it. I want to be in Borderlands. Uh, no, I don't know. Did she? think like that the psychos were just like really cool characters that she's like i saw the psychos and i'm like this is a script i could be on board with i'm sure she did think that but that is not what she said here is it um, like bill murray and garfield she thought joel cohen wrote it oh, no that would be great though <laughs> yeah she thought eli roth the character from inglorious bastards like was that gonna be the director and turned out to be the actual person instead mm-hmm. yeah it's a real bummer uh, but no, okay, so these are the two things she says in the interview, and I just think they're insane, and they're pretty funny. One, there may have been a little COVID madness. Uh, she attributes it to just, like, and this movie, to be fair, was right after COVID they started shooting it. So I do think part of it is they were just like, oh. fuck it, I'll do a movie. Whatever movie we're ready to shoot, I'll do it. Uh, but the other one that I loved so much, I was spending a lot of time in my garden using the chainsaw a little too, free, too freely. My husband said, this film could save your life. So I just needed something to do that wasn't garden chainsaw. Because her husband wow. thought the chainsaw would eventually kill her. And I think that's great. <laughs> you know what? Um, Perfectly valid reasons to do this movie. Yeah. She survived. You know, she made it all the way to now. What without a chainsaw incident. That's true. Yeah. There's plenty of people that, you know, have died. Who Maybe if they were making a Borderlands movie, wouldn't have been in whatever that exact situation was. You know? Mark Wahlberg. Yeah was busy making movies and look at how history changed for him, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, butterfly flaps its wings, but okay. Other trivia. This is, this is closer to the borderland side. Um, what? So the, the, um, Lilith's gun in this movie is, uh, has a name, which I don't expect you to know. Um, they do you know s- what DJ? Well, does it have like, a proper noun name or it has like a type? Proper noun name. Yeah. Like, no, I guess what I, know I, what I mean is like it has an in-universe like brand or like Lilith the character named her god. I don't know, but th- well, okay. First of all, in the video game, it's not used by Lilith; it's used by Marcus. Um, but um, in the game, so in the but in the in the movie, she is using this gun. I would imagine this is the same as like um, I, I would guess this is the same as a brand, like she's using the AR fifteen or whatever, you know, like something mm-hmm. like that. Um, it is a legendary pistol, uh, according to the Borderlands wiki and stuff. Um, and something specific about the gun explains something specific about how it is used in the movie. Um, and uh, I want you guys to take a crack at what it is. What is the interesting thing about this gun, uh, Diggins? Well, it's not like DJ might know. I mean, it very well might. I'm trying to understand the question, but yeah, I, know. I don't a know it off the Basically, yeah. in the it game, is. there's something special about this I- gun. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying in the game... Okay. In the game, there's something special about the gun. In the movie, that is also true. But they never uh, but say not in the- it. Yeah, but they don't say it. Right. But if okay. you're paying attention, you'll... you'll Got it. Okay, okay. Um, it, and I don't know if this is true, but this is what it says here. It doesn't need to be reloaded. DJ? That's your guess. That's a really good guess. And I'm like, there. I think there is a gun in Borderlands that that is true for, but I don't think it says... I, I believe, um, so my best guess is, I think it can fire two different ammo types. 
Mm. Like there's like an energy. There's like you can fire like energy or like fire. Like I think that's what it is. Okay, well, this is gonna be very interesting because DJ, I did give you one point in my head for getting the summary slightly more right than Diggins. And then DJ, I did give you one point for uh, guessing ragtag, but then Diggins got a point for guessing the last thing, whatever it was. And then he's also getting a point for this because according to this, the the gun is called the, I think, Vladilov Infinite. uh, And it is a gun that never needs to be reloaded in the game. And she does not reload it on screen unless she does. I don't think Uh, anybody reloaded a single gun in the entire movie. Yeah, that's true for every gun, by the way, (laughs) in the the movie, right? Not in the game. Well, they uh, they reload the guns in that second where they're not shooting the gun because every every gunfight goes like this. Aim gun, shoot, and then you cut to a guy falling off a thing. Oh, yeah, While that guy's falling off a thing, yeah. they're reloading the gun. Um, okay, so it is basically a tie for me. I, I, I'm I, having a really hard time <laughs> with this one. So we're going to go to... I should have got the gun right. Sudden we're going to go to Sudden Death, the game. I'm just doing... We're doing character game. There are a couple of characters in oh, this movie fuck. that you may recognize and may have names for, although some of them might be harder than others um, because these these, you know... Actors are frequently uh, such big stars that sometimes the movies they're in are the name of their character. But we're going to everybody has I, I want to do Jiggins' role because I actually really like that. You have a minute and you can get it wrong three times. So, you know, we'll you know what? Let's say 30 seconds. You know what? Let's say 10 seconds, 10 seconds. But you can like skip if you're, you know, having trouble coming up with one. Um I've pulled up all of the main actors IMDb pages, so we should be able to do this relatively. And this quickly. is like the like like so and so as so and so in blah. That's right. You don't have to give me like yeah. It's you know okay. I'll I'll be as generous as as usual <sighs> uh, with these, but there's some actors in here that I think you should be able to name at least maybe one or two characters they played. So uh, yeah, um, who would like to start? DJ. Well, Diggins starts because okay. that's like. This thing, yeah. Diggins, yeah. How would you uh how would you like to start? Uh Kate Blanchett is Hella in Thor Ragnarok. That's true, she is Hella in Thor Ragnarok. DJ? Uh Kate Blanchett is in Blue Ivy. Remember that movie, everyone? Um <laughs> What's her name, DJ? Nine. Oh my god. Ten. Hold on. Ke- Kevin Hart is all right. All right. Just- yep, yeah, you finished your she- sentence. Give me, give, will I get credit for this? So I think in Jumanji, is it the, is it the kid, like his nickname is like the fridge or something like that? Uh, let's see. Will you, will you give me that? Yeah, I'll give it to you if you're right about that. Cause that was like within, kind of within the time. Um, it's like fridge. Yeah, if you it's define be hard the time to find that five times longer than it's supposed to be, then yeah. <laughs> well, you know. 10 seconds is a crazy amount of time. Well, I will, I will never get this in 10 seconds. A minute, I'll give you. I think a minute is like ten seconds is crazy. I mean, t- we're doing ten seconds, but that fine. We'll 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 stick with that. Um, we I, ten seconds. Looking at this now, it is hard to find. God, he uh, his IMDb is organized so annoyingly. Um, okay, according to this, according to this, he is in Jumanji. Uh, his character in Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle is named Fridge. Okay. That is not the name of his character in Jumanji Colon the Next Level, but that is the, yeah. Is so, it really? It is. <laughs> oh, right, because yeah. he's a different guy. He's a different guy, right. Like, he's a different guy, but like, yeah, I guess there's different, I, yeah. Yeah, because they're not the kids. They're Danny DeVito and uh, right. Danny uh, Glover. Uh, Danny Glover? Right? Donald, oh, Donald Glover. Donald the Glover. rapper? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, Don, Don, Childish no. Gambino from Lethal Weapon. Uh, <laughs> that's right. But anyway. That's right. Diggins. Next, you're next. Jack Black is Bowser in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Correct. DJ, here we go. Jack Black is Dewey in School of Rock. Ooh, very good. I just want to double check that, make sure that is his name, but I think you were right about that. Um, and uh, and that should give Diggins a second or two to consider. Yeah, Dewey Finn. Um, all right, Diggins, here we go. Um, Florian Montanu is Ivan Drago in Creed 2. Damn. That's true. He is Ivan Drago. Well, actually, incorrect. Uh, that is wrong. Okay, he's Ivan Drago's um, son, who's like Victor Drago. Yeah, that's that's correct. And I'll give it to you since I said it was correct before. Uh, all right, DJ, you're next. Jack Black is Poe in Kung Fu Panda. He is Poe in Kung Fu Panda. That's Jiggins. true. Uh, okay, uh, who else is in this movie? Nine. Nine. 
10. All right. Buzz. All right. So Diggins is one of the one of the X's for you. DJ, 10 seconds. Who's your next one? One. This is so funny because we've done Jack Black before, but uh yeah, he's JB in today's just in the pick of de- and the pick of destiny. Uh let me just double check. I think that's right. Um but, we've already like, done this judging before. What if what's the Jack? Oh, I think it was Kung Fu Panda where we last did yeah, this. Yeah, that we, makes like, sense. Emptied the Jack Black folder. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Um, all right, well then, correct. So then Diggins, another one for you. One, um, two, six. Uh oh, he's eight, in High Fidelity. Ah, uh, what's his name? Ten. Barry. In High Fidelity, his name That'd is Barry. Barry Judd. Wire. That's correct. Holy Boom. Shit. All right, DJ. Here movie. you go. You're on the clock. Okay. One, two, we have to do Jack three, Black. Um, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, he's in Tropic Thunder eight. as the fat actor, fat uh, uh, Jeff Jeff Portnoy. Jeff Portnoy. Uh, he's like the Barstool guy. Yeah, Dave Portnoy from Barstool.com is correct. Uh, no, yeah, he is Jeff Portnoy. <laughs> I think it's something Portnoy. Um, I just wanted to double check. Some movie came out in 2008. My goodness. Uh, we were allowed to make funny movies back then. Yeah, that was back when before we were woke, uh, and then instead of, now we are woke, and it's all bad. Um, you can't even put Robert Downey Jr. in blackface and have him be Kang. You have to pretend he's Doctor Doom instead. It's bullshit. Diggins. Yeah, and yeah, DJ, that was correct. Diggins, you're on the clock. Oh, thanks. Ten seconds. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Uh, six, everything is fleeing five, my brain all at once. Four. Three. Oh wait, wait. Oh, I just remembered. Oh, how yeah. could I have forgotten? Ariana Greenblatt is Velma in Scoob. Scoob. That's true. Ariana, Gra- Ariana Greenblatt is Velma in Scoob. How could I forget anyone young, who's in young Scoob? Young Velma, but yes, one of the Velmas. Oh, uh, all the good. Scoobs are branded into my brain forever. And they will be until David Zaslav cancels them <laughs> for tax purposes, like he did with that other Scoob spinoff movie. That's right. Um, DJ, back to you. One, two. Uh... Oh my god! Jamie Lee Curtis is in Freaky Friday as Mom. <laughs> you know what? She, I mean, I don't think that's what her character's name is, but you never know. Um, I'm gonna look it up. It's not Mom. She is a Mom, but that's that's not her character's name. That is your first X. All right, so you both have one X. Uh, three X's and you're out. Diggins. All right. X. Thank you for reminding me. Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis yeah. is Laurie Strode in Halloween. She is Laurie Strode in Halloween. That's funny, dude. She's in Halloween, but I'm like, I don't know. If she's Michael Myers is Hunter. That's true. Well, maybe. Hunted. Well, Hunter hunted. in the new ones. Well, but Hunter in later yeah, ones. Yeah, she hunts him now. She's got to go take out Michael turned. Myers. I feel like eventually. they don't do enough with that premise in those new movies, to be honest. Yeah, because they're bad. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, wait, who's on the clock? DJ, you're on the clock? It's yeah, because he had Laurie Strode. All right, here we go. Is there more Kevin Hart? Two. Um... Mm. God damn it. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds is hard. Yeah, that's a second X for DJ. So you should probably figure out who your next guy is because Diggins is up on the clock. Go. Later than we ever had. If only I've ever seen True Lies and I knew her name in that movie. Yeah, if only you did because it's a memorable name. I knew it off the top of my head. Uh, She's been in quite a few movies. So, you know, I think there's a chance you could maybe figure out a different one. But, you know, you got ten seconds. Here we go. Ten. Seven, oh fuck! What's her six, name in the movie five, though? Four, three, two. Guesses. I can't think of the name. Ah, that's another X for you. All right, you each have mm-hmm. one more X to play with. DJ, anybody in this movie? Give me one character. Uh, they played another movie. Go. One, two, three, four, five, God, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Any last guesses? Uh, I got nothing. Ugh, that is another X for DJ. So, Diggins, all you need is one to win the whole thing. Yeah, does he have to shove me in the locker? I guess so. We have never figured this out. We haven't gotten well, this far. we both far. have two X's, right? So, like... No, yes. this is... DJ got his third X. What? So. I thought he only had two. You... No, he got three. This is he, three. DJ got the first X of the game. I've lost, like, three And then you just both got, like, oh, kind of two. Wait, what was my first yeah. X? I don't what remember. Was my... Because I just have a paper sure that has X's? X's on it, so... Yeah, no, yeah, never... the first one, because you said, like, a wrong thing. <laughs> I yeah, I don't remember what it was. Are you but, sure? Yeah. I don't know about this. I mean, people can go back and check, but 
There's so this many good answers. Awesome Diggins, you have 10 seconds. Give me sure any is. of them. I remembered I her. I remembered the name I was trying to think of. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis okay. is Deirdre oh, okay. in Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's right. She is Deirdre in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Very good. Things uh, you remember. Other names that would have been fun that I would have accepted. Yeah, it's, it was, you know, classic and very recent. Other recent things she was on The Bear. Her name is Donna Barazzo. Uh, that is a character you may recognize. Um, this is one that came up uh, just seconds before we like started talking about this movie. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis plays Madame Leota in the Hodges Mansion. Oh, movie. yeah. Uh, that would have been quite handy. Oh, yeah. Um, you said Laurie Strode, which was good. Uh, I will say her, her character in Freaky Friday's name is Tess Coleman. Uh, but you know, sure it is. Who knows? Yeah, and they're doing another one of those apparently. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Her character's name in True Lies is uh, Helen Tasker. So, in case that ever comes up again, um, and yeah, she's presumably done other things. Uh, but some other actors, uh, nobody get any Gina Gershon ones, which is fine. Forgot uh, she was but, in the movie. Yeah, yeah she's an we, actor. I don't even know who she was after you said her name, like in the movie. <sighs> Moxie, whatever. Uh, Moxie uh, boobs. Yeah. Um, you know, Moxie hard on boobs. Yeah. So there's her. Um, you didn't. No one. I didn't expect that he would go before Hella, but Florian Methaleu or whatever was Razor Fist in the Shang Chi movie. Uh, that's his other big credit. But you did say Victor Drago, which was which was correct. Uh, Ariana um, Greenblatt was also young Gamora in Infinity War. She was young Gamora. She was also young Ahsoka Tano in um oh. in the Ahsoka show. So that would have been one for her. Uh, also a character named Tabitha in The Boss Baby. Uh, to final or family business. So let's hold on. Got her as an actual baby. She's yep. in the movie. I mean, she was definitely. Yeah, super young, because that was, I guess that came out in 2017, no, 2021, oh, okay, yeah, because it's the second it three one. years ago. Wow, they're still at yeah. it. She's well, pretty I, young, I, yeah, I didn't assume I a say, boss baby movie came out this decade. I'd be surprised if this actor, she's over the age of like, I don't know, well, I don't know, she seems like an actual child more than like your, some of your, you know, euphoria actors and stuff. But who knows? Um, I, I say Edgar she's Ramirez. one of those people who looks really young, but is like 20. That's very possible. Uh, Edgar Ramirez, who plays the bad guy in this, is in stuff, but I honestly cannot find a single thing on his resume that I care about. So I'm just going to skip him. A lot of it seems like it's in uh, Spanish. But here's the the two fun ones. So Kevin Hart, um, quite a few uh, ones we missed. Um, besides being Kevin Hart in the movies Die Hart and Die Hart 2, which I would have accepted because uh, I think it's funny. Uh, he also played Ace in DC League of Super Pets, uh, oh, yeah. one of these that we did. Oh, yeah. uh, Air Marshal Dinkley in Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw, which I thought would have been funny if either of you got. Um, he plays Snowball in the Secret Life of Pets movies. Uh, he has the the little ba- bunny, the fast-talking bunny. Uh, and uh, what's the other thing he's known for? Uh, those, those, are, those are the big ones. Those are the big recent ones. Um, he's, you know, he's been around for a while. But the last one, Cape Blanchett, nobody mentioned what I would say. And obviously, you can't say Tar. You can't say Carol. Uh, Blue Jasmine character's name is Jasmine, so another one that doesn't Blue work. Jasmine. That was so the Blue one Ivy that is you, the name of Beyonce's child. That was the first child, one that you got wrong. Yeah. I fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, nobody said Galadriel for her. Uh, oh, from Lord Rings, Which is, I would say, maybe her biggest oh, role yeah. besides Hela. Uh, the other That's one I think that would have been fun if somebody got, she mm-hmm. plays Valka, the mother, I believe, in the How to Train Your Dragon movies. Uh, at least in one of them. So there's that. Uh and also, she was in uh, she was with Lou in Ocean's Eight. Remember, we did Ocean's Eight, DJ. That was a, that was a movie, wasn't it? Were you on the sure podcast was. for that, Diggins? I can't remember when yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah, I I saw that movie. For okay, the that might have been one of our first ones too. And it's, uh, or, it's a movie that stinks. I definitely saw that movie. Maybe I wasn't on the podcast yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. You saw for the love of the game. Yeah, for the love of the game. But anyway, those were the ones that we were sitting on. So this is you know fodder for next week. But to um. To his credit, Diggins has one. This is a, you know, a real shameful, a real gauntlet you came through, Diggins. But you get to tell us the secret news that you've been holding on to all episode. What did you think of the movie Borderlands? You get to say it before anybody else. Uh, so go for it, Diggins. What do you think of Borderlands? You like it? This is going to shock everybody here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody ever saw this coming. This is. This might change some people's opinions of me, honestly, but I have oh, to be wow. true to my real self. I have true to yourself. I have to stick to my guns, no matter what mm-hmm. the world may throw at me. So wow. uh, I say to hell with everyone else. I will stand on that rock and I will say that Borderlands is a bad movie. 
What? Oh my god. Incredible. He thinks it's like 2%, not 9. These yeah. psychos out here with their 9%. He's like, no, it's 2%. Better or worse than, um, than Killers of the Flower Moon? Dang it. Where would you say it falls in that spectrum? <sighs> you About know, the same? Well, you know, it's short, which is the most important thing a movie could be. So that means it's better mm-hmm. than Killers of the Flower Moon. That's fair. Very, very fair. Uh, no, <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, it's a bad movie. Like, that's not a surprise to anybody. Um, it's not funny. Uh, its attempts to be funny are mostly just annoying. Um, mm. It's it's really funny to me that this movie came out like right around the same time as Deadpool and Wolverine, mm. um, which is also a bad movie, obviously. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not a bad movie. It could have been, but look what it happened instead. It was good and this was bad. But no, it's funny because this suffers from that classic problem of an executive wanted it to have uh, a broad appeal, so they forced it to be PG-13. And the whole, like, wacky ultraviolence thing doesn't work if you don't have the ultraviolence. Mm. So, like, That's the true. fact that they're just, like, weightlessly throwing guns around and then a <laughs> muzzle flash happens and then a person, like, tosses themselves to the floor is not interesting mm. to look at. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there's that. It's not funny. Uh, by the end of the, uh, the beginning of the movie is like very normal story problems of like actors just kind of, I mean, characters just sort of come in. There's never really any motivation or reason given. Uh, things just sort of happen, but it's all like a series of events. Yeah. Like, I feel there's some crucial, like, middle bits cut out sometimes, but I'm like, I understand how we got here from there. Uh, And then the end of the movie comes, and that stops. Mm. Everything stops making sense. Uh, I feel like if I had played the games, I might have had the grasp on a few concepts that might have made the ending make more sense to me, but I haven't, so I don't. So I just Mm. had no clue why anything was happening or what any of it meant. Uh, Which is to say that I think this movie pulled off the incredible, some said impossible feat of making Madam Web look coherent. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Mm, Yeah. Uh, Kate Blanchett is pretty good though, right? (laughs) Is she? she? I think she's doing a good job with bad material. Uh, I wouldn't say I, I'd say she's doing a, I think she's doing a I think she's fine doing a job. job. Yeah, yeah, she's doing a job. She's doing a job. I, 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 think, she's I doing, think she's doing a bad job. I think she's doing the most job out of anyone in this movie. I, ooh, I don't know. I disagree. I think a lot of them are doing a lot of job. Some of them are doing quite a bad job, but <laughs> yeah. um, I see a lot of, I there's a lot of commitment across job. the board to this movie for some reason. All right. Uh, the best job out of anyone in this movie. I would still disagree uh, with that, but really? we'll get to it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, do, I do think somebody else that almost works. Um, but that's my opinion. Of the movie. It's Klieg. It's he loves yeah. Klieg. I, love Klieg. I love when I have a man stand on screen, and every once in a while, a video game soundbite plays. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, we'll talk more about all the many ways the movie is bad later. But that's my general opinion of it. What about you, DJ? What did you think? I hated this movie so much. Nando was right. I watching this, I'm like, oh my god, trap! What what a what mm. what a feast for the senses. Yeah. <laughs> my taste buds are tingling. I, I, I'm still. I, it's been a week and a half since I saw Trap, and I'm still like, oh, but there's just so much there. Lady Raven, mm. Mm. Or the sultry voice. It was so ah, I love it. Okay, uh, more of my ears. Okay, Jesus. whoa, she's okay, like right, half right. our age. Yeah. And I'm that's singing, guys. I didn't say the the horrible word that I'm not allowed to say anymore. I feel like sultry as a word has connotations, but maybe it's a word that technically God. doesn't mean exactly that. But I you know, I don't know. Solely Let's in see music. What, see what M Night says. Right. Turns out she's actually she five years younger than me. She looks younger. Really? Holy moly! All right, I take it back. Sultry all the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. It's probably an yeah. adult if she's doing the movie like this. But good for her. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, this movie sucks. It's a shame. I, I was a huge, I'm a huge border Stan, uh, except Borderlands three. I don't love that game as much, but I, I loved one. I loved two. What about tiny, the, Teen, tiny Tina's wasteland or wonderland or whatever oh, the hell. Yeah, the one that I didn't play D&D. that or the yeah. D one. Yeah. I, I guess I fell off the wagon at some point, but you know, early to mid two thousands or like early to mid 2010s. I was, I was on it. I was on it. I played the telltale game. Like Tales from the Borderlands. Oh, uh, back when we decided those were all awesome, right? So yeah, I, uh, because you made I, decisions, it affected something. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the, the, the game changed based on what you said. Yeah, uh, I have heard. Nando will remember this. I have heard that that Borderlands Telltale game was one of the good ones. It was one of the good ones. Um, it, it injected some of the good humor, and it, it's a shame because the games. And a lot of the source material do have like good humor. It's just not here because mm. all the humor in the games is like subtle little things. Um, like maybe a cycle run at you and it's like, uh, it's like, I, I left the oven on at home. And like, oh, that's like a little funny thing is I'm like shooting them in the face or like claptraps things are like not fucking this. There's mm. literally anything else that like can be funny. Um, um. And maybe it was like. I don't know, DJ. From what I've talked to people about, the one authentic part of this movie is that the writing isn't funny. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. <laughs> I mean, okay, and maybe it's a it's it's a twenty year old me sensibility, right? But but I I still think that there 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 are things in there. I agree. The writing and story are typically bad. It's about the gunplay. It's great gunplay. It's great looter shooter. But there is some humor. Sorry, there. we call point is there's none of that humor here. Schluters, mm. yes. This movie is incredibly unfunny and humorless and drab and boring and horrible and unwatchable and whatever the word is for makes you sleepy. It's just, it's all of those things. I I have nothing good to say about this movie. I think that every actor in this movie, okay, I, I don't know much about Ariana Greenblatt and I'm sure she is a fine actress, but I think her performance in this movie is borderline uh, uh, eye gouging. Borderland I, I eye gouging. It, yeah. Borderland eye gouging. Exactly. Borderline That's what I was on the borderland of gouging my eyes out. Mm. Um, I thought just awful there. We'll talk about Kate Blanchett. We should talk about all the actors at some point, but I, I found her to be true neutral. Kevin Hart was exactly Kevin Hart. And I don't agree with that. Fucking. I, all right. We'll, we'll talk about it. And Jamie Lee Curtis showed up. And I, I don't just agree thought, with that either, but sure. Well, all right. All right. She did more than show um, up. She, <laughs> she showed out. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a disdain that I have for like, you know, the movie did the thing very early on where it's like, we have to go to Firestone. And it's like, I know that. That's the thing I know. I, I know it's Sanctuary. Yeah. It's Moxie. Right. But gotta then, give like, it up for Sanctuary. Gotta yeah. give it up for Sanctuary. Yeah, we up. love Sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like maybe that's why I hate it more because it took the game that I really like. I didn't expect anything from this movie, but it's like, hey, I remember liking these things, and this is bad. So it made me like it. It made me dislike it that much more. Yeah. So. If the Super Mario Brothers movie taught us anything, it's that all you have to do is jangle a bunch of shiny keys in front of your average gamer, and they'll go ape shit. So. Well, and don't forget some random pop songs that don't mean anything, but like you kind of recognize from the radio right. in the eighties. Mm-hmm. That helps. Yeah, those two things. Yeah, your average gamer just loses their mind. So yeah. I like how you're still standing by the the table <laughs> because it is a bad it. movie. Oh yeah, it's not a good movie. It's I yeah I'm I'm with you on that one. All I'm saying is Borderlands really screwed up that they didn't even do that. Yeah, they, yeah, they should have. They should have had more jangly keys. So, Nando, what did you think of this shit show? It was. It's it stinks. I don't like it. <laughs> do something about it. They should fix it by not doing it, but they did it. They uh, apparently reshot this movie extensively because the R rating was too R. Like it's not even just that they decided not to make an R rated movie. It's that they made one and they went, eh, this is a little R rated for our taste," and then went and made the PG thirteen movie. They had to make a full new score. Like they that was how extensive these reshoots were. And Western music just like fuck that motherfucker, yeah. fuck shit, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, that was the music. That's right. Probably. That was the whole soundtrack. That was the whole soundtrack. It was uh, also Shalika Shemlon, but she was like in her dark <laughs> period. It was back in the day. Uh, but yeah, no, this movie stinks um, because it's not good and it doesn't. I don't see. I don't like the games. Like I don't like Borderlands for 
I like the aesthetic. I like the idea of them. I like the idea of a couch co-op game. But they're one of those games where, like, there's lots of weapons, and you pick them up, and it's like a VX90 plus with fire ammo and 86 range clipping. And you just, like, it's all these numbers and shit. And it's like, give me the 15 guns. Tell me what they are before the game starts, and then I know which one I have, like, in Halo. Uh, but, like, all this math. I don't know. I never felt like I was getting the most out of it. Um, I like the classes that they have in the game where it's, like, different classes, and that's how you fight. Uh, you know, I think that's completely, you know, absent of this until the very last scene. So that as a thing that could have been fun, doesn't really get to happen. Um, and I think everybody's doing a pretty bad job except, uh, one actor who we'll get to, uh, who I think is, is doing their, doing their little best. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they shouldn't have made it. Yeah, oh my oh my god <laughs> yeah they shouldn't have made it uh it's bad uh it's everything you it really is i remember when this trailer came out maybe like i don't know three months ago and everybody watched it and went wow that trailer feels a lot like that guardians of the galaxy trailer from like that first guardians of the galaxy movie but bad and i know that's correct and that was correct then and it's extra correct now <laughs> But, you know, kind of like, why? What is so bad about this? Uh, why doesn't it feel like Guardians of the Galaxy? And besides, like, all of it, like, the, the things that James Gunn is good at and Eli Roth just is not good at, um, it's also just, like, there's it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting movie where, like, no one in the movie, it, like, and because like, Guardians of the Galaxy starts with, like, some dancing and shit, and you got, like, Drax, who has his wild attitude, and Rocket, who, like, you know, he's on top of Groot and someone tosses him a gun and in slow motion gets, oh yeah. It's a movie where <laughs> no one is having fun the whole time. None of the characters are enjoying what we're doing. And it's fucking dreadful. Like, for a movie that is, like, in this idea of, like, it's a video game that's supposed to be kind of fun and jokey, every every character is so upset about the whole thing. It's honestly why I don't hate Florian, whatever, Mat- Matanitu or whatever. Because, like, his character was at least kind of like, hey, here we are. But, I mean, it wasn't good. But, like, yeah, I think, like, a claptrap, it seems like, that seems like maybe the biggest single mistake of this movie. Um, And we'll get to him. But, like, that's supposed to be the character where you kind of figure out the tone of, like, why are we here? Why is it fun to be here? Because he's, like, the ambassador of this world. And instead, claptrap is also, like, a bummer the whole time. It sucks. It's bad. Um, Yeah. I'm I'm surprised this movie got released, honestly. You know? David Zaslav, we were a little too harsh on you <laughs> for one of those things you did. Wow. Like, what if they didn't release this movie, though, you know? It's not going to make any money. It costs a lot to market, I'm assuming, because this costs gonna at least make $100 million to make. Any money. Like, I think we got the first yeah. weekend total, and it was, like, less than $10 million or something insane. Damn. Do you think if they, this, they canceled this movie, there would be like a big Twitter upright, or like uproar and people would be like, yeah, release Borderlands, give us Borderlands. No, I feel you like know? that would that would feel like one of the old cancellations where it's just like the movie's clearly not working and we've already sunk a bunch of money into it. It's not going to be popular. We should just quietly pull the plug on this and let it die. Yeah. This is perfect for, like, straight to streaming, you know? Hell yeah. This would have been right in it. Like, it's so funny that this came out the same year as Rebel Moon. Because they're kind of the same movie, but different. Like, they're different paint jobs on a boring Star Wars or a boring Guardians of the Galaxy. But, like... Yeah, they're... they're yeah, Netflix sh- should have got this. They're team-up movies where none of the characters have personalities. Yeah. It sucks. Um... And you know what? They're team-up movies where none of the characters have personalities, but it's so clear what they're emulating that it's like, not only do they not have personalities, they kind of don't have the personalities that make this work because we know how it works. If this guy is like this and this guy is like that, whatever. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this movie stinks. Might be the worst movie we've watched this year. It's uh, a strong contender. Like, I don't know if it's worse than, like, you know, like the Whoopi Goldberg and Dinosaur movie. Theodore but like. Yeah, but definitely movies released this year. I think it's it's probably one yeah, of that, the worst. That's ones. what I assumed you meant. It's the one of the worst. Yeah. it's possibly the worst movie released this year. We really have gotten some stinkers though. Between this, Madam Web, and Watchers, and then potentially Harold and the Purple Crown. We'll see. Uh, this has not been an incredible year, but you know, that pulled me a lot of money, so that's pretty good. You guys save the movies. Save movies. Yeah, it's like Barbenheimer and one guy. <laughs> Well, but it's um, two guys, Nando. 
Oh, that's true. Mm. Mm. And uh, yeah, speaking of two, uh, you know, there's two wheels on certain vehicles in Borderlands. Cop Trap has one wheel, actually. Um, so yeah, I can't think of it's, a two wheeled vehicle. There's like motor- sure there's motorcycles in this, right? There? Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know about any of our characters driving one in this, but they definitely exist in universe. Um, that's another thing. I should like these games because I like games with, with lots of vehicles, but um, yeah, I just didn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Uh, but yeah, there's wheels on those. Let's talk about wheel. It, you know, it has wheels. The sentence wheels. Enjoy hiring DJ. Summarize the movie. DJ, summarize the movie. You lost the thing. All right. Borderlands, <laughs> baby. I- I was going to bring it up. You know, I didn't think you guys were actually going to let me off the hook. So I knew, mm. I knew, I knew. Um, I'm going to make this quick for the uh, benefit of our listeners because this movie is unintelligible and stupid. And it's like filled with action scenes, like a double stuffed Oreo. Just how much cream can we get in between the two cookies? Uh, that is dumb that's action a, scenes. That's a movie. mega stuff. Double stuff is the amount of cream that there should be in those cookies. That's true. That's a good point. I am learning now for the first time that there is a level up from double stuff. Oh, I yeah. Double stuff was as most. Wow. There I, is. I mean, I think Brennan Lee Mulligan did that one sketch a while back. That's just like the Oreo boss will not stop innovating. But like they've done everything. Um, it's the opposite. Oh the God. Oreo so, boss is like, guys, you don't have to work this right. hard. Yeah. The Oreo <laughs> boss is like, we made the best cookie ever. What's the difference between strawberry and strawberry and cream? Like we're, we're good guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna mega stuff this then. All right. Uh, uh, just actually, one gonna, big saying, Oreo, Oreo thin just the size I'm, of the bag. I'm gonna <laughs> Oreo thin this summary. Actually, that's oh, what I'm about to do. Unforgivable. I'm about to, I'm about to Oreo thin this. Okay. Why not just um, eat the bag it comes in? <laughs> yeah. Disgusting. All right. The movie opens with Kevin Hart rescuing Tiny Tina because she's in prison or whatever. It doesn't really matter, but she rescues her. Okay. Smash cut. Lilith, she's a bounty hunter. That's Kate Blanchett. We learned she's a bounty hunter. Great. Uh, Atlas, who is the guy who runs a big weapons corporation in the galaxy, he uh, contracts Kate Blanchett to find his daughter, Tina, the one that Kevin Hart rescued. Okay, great. Um, so she's like, well, I got to go to Pandora because that's where she is. Okay, she goes to Pandora. She more or less quickly finds tiny tina because she's great at her job hold on dj Uh, what's on pandora oh right the vault a mysterious vault (laughs) of magic stuff from the iridians an ancient race that was here but now gone that's some exposition we get from kate blanchett at the beginning we get little sprinkles kate blanchett's voice yeah (laughs) i mean that's fair uh, we get sprinkled a little uh, uh, Kate Blanchett ex- exposition voiceover uh, throughout the movie. Okay, so she finds Tiny Tina. Tiny Tina, uh, Tiny Tina tries to basically throw explosives at Kate. At, at, I'm just going with Lilith. It's easier at Lilith until she oh, dies. She doesn't die because she's our main character. So she's not going to die. Um, Tiny Tina does not want to be taken because she hates her dad, or like she doesn't want to go back to her dad, or like. The movie refuses to explain this for another 30 minutes. Yeah, right. What What is the reason, again, just so I don't have to explain it again? We don't learn this now, but I'm just going to say it. The uh, reason why she doesn't want to get captured by her evil yeah. father? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, got it, right. Father she's evil. She's like, right. well, we don't know this yet. I would say this is a well, spoiler at this point. I think we can all guess that the father's evil, but we don't know That's specifically right. why she believes him to be evil. Right. Until I'll right. wait yeah. for it to come up. She doesn't want to go back. So, uh... During their kerfuffle, she's then not going back, she's not going back. They chant that in the movie, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Not going Pretty back. cool. Um, <laughs> Alice's private army, the Crimson Lance, comes to get Tiny Tina. It's like, what? Why? Um, <laughs> what, what are we doing here? Like, <laughs> yeah, so stupid. Because uh, you know you need two different groups of people with the same objective. That's how you know mm-hmm. you ratchet up the stakes in a movie. So then, insert action scene, Kevin Hart comes in, in a truck, and oh, by the way, Claptrap is here. I'm not going to say anything else about Claptrap, because it doesn't matter. It actually here and matters he's annoying. so much at the end. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, why is Prop Claptrap here? What's he doing here? Oh, right. It doesn't matter at the end. Okay, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll mention him again at the end, but just he's around. There's a little Jack Black trash can robot who's following everyone around. Okay, so Roland... Who else do we meet in, in this scene? Right, so Roland ho- rolls up in a Humvee, and then everyone gets into the car, right? So here's Who else everyone. do we meet in this scene? It's Kate Blanchett, it's Tiny Tina, and then it's Big Psycho Man. Yeah. He's friends of Tiny Tina. I'm actually not going to mention him for the rest of the movie. Because he fine. doesn't do anything important. That one is true. <laughs> so yeah. he will... Re- he's also just, in it, the beginning of the movie. It's weird how he's intertwined in this movie. As yeah. if he is like a main character from the games that they're finally in the, bringing to life. In the in the beginning scene where Kevin Hart rescues Tiny Tina, he just sort of like busts out of a prison, and they're like, "I guess you're part of this now." <laughs> it's just, just insane. Why would they let him keep the mask on if he's in a prison cell? It's just, whatever. Okay, you, you uh, trying to get that mask off of him? I don't right. know. So uh, they drive to a valley of piss. Mm-hmm. Very important. Mm-hmm. And then they defeat a piss monster. Also true. Uh, and then uh, they basically come to terms. It's like, okay, we're a party now. Um, but she's like, I just want to get Tina back to uh, her dad. And she's like, well, well and that- well, no, she's like, so <laughs> this is so stupid. Basically. So she fought uh, the Crimson Lance earlier mm-hmm. to help Tina get away from them. Now, Considering she doesn't know anything about Tina or anything about her dad being evil, you would think the obvious reason she would do that is, well, I want to get paid for this, and that means I have to be the one to bring her in. Right? Perfect sense. Right. And she's a bounty hunter, and she's taking this job because she needs, like, not even needs, but just wants a shitload of money. So, like, yeah. Yeah. they, they, It's implied that he's offering her, like absolutely astronomical amounts of money because remember she's from here and she hates going back yes. she doesn't want to yes. will never go back if you chance it that's right um but instead after they get through piss valley uh she's like well i guess i'm stuck with you guys because i'll be wanted now for fighting the crimson land right <laughs> yeah. it's like well then why did you do it first of all and secondly why does that mean you have to stick around and help them be part of the group of people that the Crimson Lance is hunting more than anyone, I would think yeah. that would mean you just fuck off. Right, right. That's what she should do, right? That's very much what she should do. Uh, but no, she's like, right, we're, we're a party now, right? Party formed. Party Ooh. formed almost. We Yeah, we yeah. got someone else we got to bring in. Okay, so they're like, okay, we have to go to Sanctuary because I guess the plan is that Kevin Hart says is we're going to open the vault because we have Tina, who is a child of the Iridians, which means she can open the vault. She has a key, and so if we get the other keys, then she can open the vault. Be- because it is the MacGuffin. So. And then some people are like, hey, is. Kevin Hart, how do you know that? A. B. Why do you care? C. Like, what does any of this mean to you personally? How did you get involved in this at all? And Kevin Hart yeah. says, shut up. So now we go to Sanctuary. This is the next waypoint. The rest of the movie is just going from place to place with mega stuff Oreo action scenes in, in between them, right? Um, because despite the movie being about 90 minutes, it is not a tight 90. So they go to Sanctuary. No, they go, they, they put on fun little holographic blue masks so no one can see who they are. Roland literally steps five feet from a wanted poster of him and is like, that's a good looking guy. Uh, just like... I like, Crazy. Oh, I love that. I love how he says that. And he goes, if there's one of me, there's one of all of the rest of us. And it's like, do we just not want to edit those or something? Is that like <laughs> not worth it to just make the little blue versions of their faces? Also, like, hey, Lilith, maybe cut your gigantic red hair or something if we're trying to blend in. Like, this is these these aren't real masks. They're little CGI masks. So you can still weird. see all the parts of your hair that poke and- through them. It stick out. It sticks out because they're the only ones wearing them. Yeah, like nobody else a has fun them. Little masquerade. Like well, because they the were expensive to put them. in the movie, you know. So what are you supposed so to do? It's like just the five of them have them. No worries. Yeah. Um, not the psycho. He's just got his psycho mask. Well, he's always yeah, wearing a mask. 
Yeah. And that's true. And it seems like people in the in the game, and I so I, I kind of know this. I played the second game, but like I don't remember anything that happens in this place. Um it feels like he would be people would be losing their minds if he was just casually walking through the bazaar. Yes. You know? Everyone like, trying to be kill him. Yeah. yeah. But everybody's yeah. like, oh, uh, well, you know, that one's supposed to be Groot, and we're fine with Groot in these, so he can also be in these. You yeah, know? exactly. The control F didn't change anybody's reaction to Groot. Um, <laughs> it's great. So they go they go to Moxie's bar, and, and Moxie uh, basically gives them more exposition um, mm. and tells them where they need to go to find the next key. Or d- no, 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 no. She tells them where yeah. to go to talk to the next person <laughs> right. who can tell them where to find the next right. key. And where right. they need to yes, go fr- is basically out back. <laughs> yeah, upstairs yeah. to the little elevator thingy. There's another right. guy. Go go, go! talk to Tannis. That's Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, also, uh, hey, Lilith, I'm sorry about the thing with your mom. We get a little vague thing with maybe something with Lilith's mom. We'll get to it. It's fine. Okay, now we talk to Tannis. She's a crazy science lady played by Jamie Lee Curtis. She knows where the next vault key is because she's, like, obsessed with these things. Um, and she's like, I'm coming along, too. Now I'm part of your party. Uh, and then leave Sanctuary. I don't think oh, there's anything on. else that happens. There's so much more here. This is the one part where, because Roxy or Moxie or whatever had her, like, I'm sorry about what happened with you and your mom. Yeah, Tanix is also like even more sorry about that. Oh, because she's right. way yeah. more involved than, than Moxie was. I'm I'm super super sorry of your mom because um y- your mom put me in charge of you after she uh what we later find out is gave you away helicopter style kind of threw you in my arms on a helicopter and mm-hmm. I fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did bad job and I gave you to a bunch of violent miners. M I N E E R S. Yep. Uh. For reasons that are not clear, no one ever really says. Doesn't matter. Also, um, I always think this is fun because this is a movie about. Well, you know, we'll get to it. Well, we'll get to it. Uh, but yeah, continue. But this also, okay. uh, he shouldn't continue yet because this is also the scene where Lilith and Tina bond for no reason, where Tina reveals uh, that she right. is a clone of Iridian blood. Which yes, means right. she is the daughter of Aradia who can open the vault. And that's and why is, oh. she doesn't want to be with her dad because he just, he does not, he's not really her dad and doesn't really care about her. He just cloned her so that he can open yeah. the vault. And yes. this is also the scene where another character who we haven't mentioned yet at all, because he doesn't matter, but is like a recognized black actor, Bobby Lee, like bumps in at Kevin Hart and is like, oh my God, my, my friend Kevin Hart. And then he's like, he's totally found. Um, so yeah, Bobby Lee's in this yeah. from, from Mad for TV. Him. Yeah, good for him. Uh, so yes, all of that happens, and then we leave. I think we leave in a dumpster. We we leave in a dumpster. Uh, so now we're at the place where the key is. Uh, it is inhabited by a crazy ton of psychos. Those are the bad guys. Well, these are like the super uh, psychos that psychos right. are scared of. They're even more psychos. So it's like. Ah, uh, there's like no way we can get through. It's like impossible. Oh, but wait, we have a claptrap. What claptrap could do is like kind of sneak through and provide like a little bit of a distraction that can allow the rest of the party to like kind of get through. But the, the, there's still an action scene here. I I, I I don't know the steps of how we get from like. So DJ, didn't you also watch this movie today? I may have fallen asleep during this part of the movie. <laughs> Incredible. That's so, fair. So, Claptrap distracts them by getting shot at a bunch, because he's, like, invincible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it, and that's then, canon to the game, too. Sure. Uh, and then, but that lets them sneak into the crate area where all the stuff is, where the key might be, but it's full of crates, DJ. What are they going to do? Well, luckily, luckily, just, you know, by happenstance, Lilith just happens to find one um, for, you know, I guess she's really lucky, but Lilith happens to find one. That might be important later. Um, Who can say oh, yeah. This but, is a question that might be worth it for people that haven't seen the movie, but know the game. Anything interesting about Lilith Any right off the bat? Like anything that you'd be like, that's something that's in a video game. With her, like the red hair. Well, I would say that too. That's but right. also, she <laughs> she's has no. A, she's a unnatural abomination known as a yeah. ginger. 
Yeah, she's stealing ginger jobs by being not ginger, so that's very important. But no, I that's guess true. what I'm getting at is, if you've played the game, you're familiar with Lilith being a character who can do all kinds of magic bullshit, she can't do it in oh, this. Right. That is not yes, part of it uh, for no reason, as far as we know. So, great. Uh, maybe we'll get to it, but... Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. She's in the game, she says, what does someone say? Siren. Yeah. They're magic people. She like, yeah, you know, lures sailors to their death on the rocks? Mm-hmm. I guess that's part of it. Yeah, it's kind of part of it. It's right. also, all these characters are exactly the same. That's the thing I think yeah. that's so fun about this game. It's like a game where everybody's got like different types and specialties, but in this, they all have guns that just aim and shoot. That's right. Um, except for the big guy, I guess. Um, So they find it, but oh no, the psychos are after them, and it's wave after wave because of Because Claptrap just made so much noise pooping <laughs> out all those bullets. Mm-hmm. Oh. We hate him so much. Uh, so it's wave after wave after wave and they're, they're trying to escape and then uh, they, they get to an elevator, but it's like not fully wired. So Roland has to sacrifice himself. <gasps> he like jumps has out to of the strong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he has to, he jumps out of the elevator, rewires it. So everyone else can go up the elevator, but then the psychos are just setting upon him and Patina gave him a bomb, but he uses the bomb and that gets rid of some of them, but still they keep coming and coming and coming. So, um, Roland's probably dead, except when they get to the top, Tina's like, oh my god, Roland did that awesome thing, and Lilith's like, I know I just met the guy, but he's definitely fine. Like, yeah. don't worry about it, Tina, he's not dead. And then they also cut to him being fine. Yeah. <laughs> just in case yeah. there was a single moment of tension <laughs> left. Um, also, one other pretty important thing about that that escape scene that you missed, CJ. How they that eventually escape. Through. Like, mm-hmm. how do they avoid getting smashed to a pulp by the elevator, which is out of yeah, control? Like, they, oh, if you don't remember oh, this, right, they show course. it later in the movie again. They, right. <laughs> yeah, just, so, yeah, they were like, we know you probably right. fell asleep at some point, so yeah. here's the salient points. <laughs> uh, right, because they're about to get smushed, but then they teleport out, and it's like, oh my god, how did that teleport thing happen? And, and Tina's like, I guess I'm just awesome. Uh, that was all me, guys. It was all me, even though Lilith seems really out of shape after it and everyone else is more or less fine. But Lilith is like throwing up and it's like, wow, that, that really, I don't want to say took a toll on her, but you know, she, she, she really went through some stuff during, during that teleportation that was done by Tina. Yeah. Well, but Tina was cloned from Iridian blood, DJ. How could that possibly mean absolutely nothing? (laughs) (laughs) Where was she? Maybe. Uh, um so so now they have all the keys so now it's vault opening time but oh wait the the crimson tide is back mm, and they're here for the blood. Great, history's greatest villains yeah <laughs> right up there with what's her name jenny lind she can lead <laughs> these monsters into battle she's in I, the sequel probably I I know I'm missing something. I don't know if it's because I fell asleep again or if I just yeah. blacked out. There, there's I'm a like, bit where the bad guy calls what's her name on like a hollow phone and is like, "Hey, do bad guy stuff for me." Oh I mean, yeah, and the reveal. It's but, not yeah, even yeah, okay. like do bad guy stuff for me. He's like, "Hey, I know everything already right, for yeah. some reason, and I'm gonna get Tina back. And if you do something, <laughs> I'm gonna kill everybody." And she's like, "Darn!" And he's like. I'm glad you've agreed to work with me. And she's like, that's not what happened here. And he's like, yeah. shut up. I'm saying ambiguous things to someone overhearing. It could have a misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. Right. So then Tina decides that the only way to resolve this is to once again, explode Lilith. This are so. Oh, wait, sorry. I did forget one other thing that we do this. Uh, she goes and watches like a little hologram of her mommy from the computer. That didn't happen yet. Yeah, it does. No, 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 no. That's after this. After yeah, what? By, after they get separated. So, she does that by her. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. However, yeah. you so, are missing the part where they're like, where Lilith is like, well, we still got to find the third key. And uh, Tannis says, no, we've decided the movie's too long. The third key is, <laughs> is, is, yeah. is Tina now. Did and you also, not get the pink pages yeah. for the new script? It's uh, <laughs> Tina's the key. I'm like, oh, <laughs> And also, if she opens the vault, maybe she'll die. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There might be a great second. Yeah. And yeah, Lilith is terrible. like, 
Typically, op- keys don't, like, crumble to dust when they open doors. Why would you assume that would be the case? And Tannis is like, mm, I want there to be some drama, I guess. It's not going to mm. matter. Yeah. So, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, so, so then, uh, right, due to the misunderstanding, Tina's like, ah, you bitch, and, and uses her bunny grenade because uh, ev- everything's a nail and and her bombs are hammers. Yeah. So. And also, we can't possibly uh, discuss our problems for even a single second. Nope, mm-hmm. nope, nope, nope. So, uh, but luckily, uh, Kate Blanchett is the greatest dodger of explosive bunnies. So, you know, she gets knocked out, but she doesn't But she gets die. up again. Yeah. She does get up again. Uh, so, uh, Claptrap is celebrating her demise prematurely. Uh, and then, oh, damn it, I mentioned him again. Uh, no, but it's important because she, she, like, on her way to find them, she, like, winds up in her childhood home. Yeah. Um, and there's, like, she finds old drawings that she did. Claptrap sees these and goes into, like, R2-D2 project hologram mm-hmm. mode. That's right. And es- essentially what we learn is that Lilith's mom, like, was Iridian? No. Or w- was a direct descendant of Iridians? Nope. I don't know. Pretty much the message is just like, hey, daughter, I love you. Bye. Yeah, it's just that her dead mom. The message nice. is actually not important we, <laughs> at all. No, isn't that how we learn the Iridian secret? No, it's like, the, the at most, she's like, you're special. I love you. Uh, okay. Bye. Okay. They don't actually yeah. tell us until the next scene. Oh my god! Because I, I I thought the reason that like the whole thing with Tannis is like, well, I gave you a Tannis so you wouldn't have to sacrifice yourself or something like that. That sounds right, knew, but if I you don't stayed remember. on Pandora, you would be. She keen. says these things basically, but she says them vaguely and does not say why or like what the reason yeah. she would be in danger is or any of that. Okay, great, awesome. Well, I gave it away, guys, but we're about to find out in like two seconds because now guess who's back? Red Shining Justice. Um, They're here and they got Atlas and they're going to kill everyone. Uh, So first, it, so they're all at the vault minus K- uh, Lilith, right? And well, and uh, Roland, Daddy, who died. Yeah, you know, he's dead. Right, right, right. So he's not there either. Yeah. Um. So oh, wait, Daddy look, Atlas, there he is. is like, oh, yeah. Yeah. hey, <laughs> Daddy Atlas is like you're fucked. There's nothing you could do. Um, I'm going to describe but, what he has, by the way. What his like? Oh yeah, kit is. So, yeah, he's got all of his soldiers on a little hovercraft, and then he has the big dreadnought ship from Rebel Moon that has oh. like the big laser cannons, and they don't have just, any grain, no. so they can't protect <laughs> themselves grain. with that. They ate it all. <laughs> yeah. Do you think no that ship steak. also has a bunch of dudes up in a boiler room shoveling coal? I think they'd also <laughs> travels by a space vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe space butthole in this because it's so edgy and cool. Yeah. Or I bet it's space butthole in the new Rebel Moon extra sexy cut or whatever. Yeah. When they I don't go know. out, clap shop is like, oh, it's time for us to get pooped out of the space butthole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that something that happened in Thor? I think that's something that happened in one of the Thors, right? Didn't they have to fly through the anus or something? Remember that? There's something no, like that. Your Isn't that the it. name of the portal they use to get out of uh, Ragnarok? Like in that movie, they get out of the planet that they're on, and there's like a portal called like the Great Butthole or something. I don't remember what it is, uh, but I'll t- I'll take your word. Taika got there first. Claptrap couldn't even do it. <laughs> this is a Taika CD movie if I've ever seen one. How like, dare you? Uh, I'm saying, like, it's, this This is right up his alley. He should have done this instead. Um, like maybe it would have uh, been good. So I can't remember who comes back first, Roland or Lilith. I think it's Roland. Roland, Roland yeah. yeah. Roland comes back Roland first. Roland shows up like, and shoots Atlas, and he's got his invincibility shield on. So it yep, didn't matter. So too bad. So too bad. Uh, and then uh, it's like, nah, you're still fucked. But then Lilith comes, and she's like, no, nah, now nah, you're really fucked. Um, kind of. Uh, How did so she, she show up? Yeah, yeah. She she swoops in. She teleports because she realizes that she's the true daughter of Iridia, and now she has her powers. So she's basically unstoppable because she can use her psychic powers now slash fire powers. Um, but she's like, all right, if you open the vault and let, t- I'll open the vault if you let Tina go. 
And he's like, I'll let y'all go if you open the vault. Yeah, so, I like that. <laughs> I like okay. that shit. <laughs> Bad negotiating. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you want. Is that how we do this? I wish she had been like, shit, I should have started with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, God damn Probably not going to uh, let the big giant guy go. He seems like he's going to kill us anyway, but everybody else is cool. Y'all joined my uh, little team. So, uh, now it's big, big action scene. Um, cause she goes oh to open the vault, God. but she, she might die, but she's not going to die. Um, they, why does, like, try to remember. If I, your I question is why, my, yeah. I have no answers for you. Uh, if your well, question is what happens, I can explain. I think at well, one like, point, Tiny Tina falls down a big pit or something, but, but I, she, I can't remember why. She, they, so, what happens is. Lilith goes to open the vault, mm-hmm. yes. and she does. And instead of opening a vault, it gives her superpowers for reasons I couldn't even begin right. to understand. Sure, right, right, and 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 that makes Daddy Atlas upset. So he's like, "Well, I guess I have to kill you all now." Um, but then he, he like orders like R- Crimson Tide, kill him. But then the leader of the Crimson Tide is like, "No, that's bad." And then they fucking just vaporize her with the with the grain cannon. That actually happens mm. before Lilith shows up. Yeah. Oh shit! My bad. She doesn't make it that far into it. They, they, I, I figured you're of, just skipping it because it couldn't possibly matter less. Yeah, that's true. But it was an awesome visual. I'm like, wow, they fucking vaporized her. Uh, okay, so yeah, n- now it's fight, and then um, eventually Lilith is like, okay, I guess I'll open the vault now because well, she does open the vault. Well, can you describe the fight or what what Lilith brings to the fight? Oh my god, makes the like, whole thing pointless. The what the fire the fire all the fire she gives Which everyone kind of on her fire. side an invincibility oh, power yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah everyone on her side now invincible that's got to be a game thing right i i know she has the wings in the game but i was like does she also give you ultra shields or something uh i think someone does but not her oh okay <clears throat> i think roland might but but roland doesn't have super, like superpowers it's all like tech stuff yeah but um even though they're all invincible um well, I guess it, it doesn't matter. But, like they don't just like are invincible and run away. She still opens the vault. <laughs> she, well, because well, just, she, he gets Tina and has the knife to her throat, and it's like you open the vault or I'll fucking kill her. Yeah, and she's like, "All right, bro, chill out." So she opens the vault, takes him into the vault, and then he's like, "Wow, this is amazing!" And then he gets eaten by a tentacle monster, and then and you're like, "What the fuck is that?" And the movie's like, yeah. "Don't worry about it." And like, wait for the Rebel Moon extended cut Borderlands to show us <laughs> it, uh, him it, it having sex thing. with the tentacle monster. Anyway, Again, enjoy. it doesn't matter here. Accurate to the game. Yeah. There's yeah. A I did, the vault you fight. I did look this up later, and yeah, in the first game, what's in the vault turns out to not be technology, but a big old monster. Mm. Um, but like, fuck if that's explained or hinted at at all in this game, in this movie. Yeah. No, not at all. And um, yeah, movie over. <laughs> We did it. Yeah, they wow. celebrating and they're like, it's time for peace on Pandora. And I'm like, why? What do you yeah. mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, wait till Handsome Jack hears about that. I also don't think anybody's going to believe you, even if you're like, we found the vault, guys. Nobody has to look for it anymore. Don't worry. There's nothing in it. Everybody would be like, yeah, no. Everybody says that every time they go into the desert. It's a lie, hey, right? Like, you're just yeah. trying to get us to not murder you? Um, yeah. The only thing that might actually have repercussions is that they killed Atlas and yeah. I don't think violent power struggles within a mega corporation is really going to make it more peaceful. It does seem like the mega corporation is him, that lady he vaporized, and a bunch of psychos. Oh, and the one guy in the bat costume or whatever. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of power structure here at all. Um, Presumably, like, back on their home planet, there's a bunch of fucking accountants or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somebody must be managing the money right they can't all just be uh chasing his daughter well i guess there's those three guys that he sent to get lilith that all got executed or whatever well actually one of them survived so it's probably That's him right. he's probably in charge of the company now good for him maybe that was handsome jack <laughs> probably i don't know too much about handsome jack i what i kind of understand is that handsome jack is kind of what atlas is but but like Atlas is kind of handsome Jack plus another character smushed together. Is that right? Or something? I don't know. Yeah. I just know that handsome Jack is an antagonist in the Borderlands games and people generally like him. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's like a fun villain who does things. He, 
he kills like one of the guys from the first game. I want to say like he kills Roland or something like that. Like he's a badass. Cool. He definitely kills one of the characters you can play in the first game has a bird who's who that's who I mained on my very first playthrough. And the bird definitely dies. Oh my god. How dare they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, you know what? The wheel. We have the wheel, you guys. Let's spin the wheel. We got a lot of things. We probably won't get to them all, but we're going to spin it and see what happens. Hopefully not. Here we go. Spin, spin, spin. It lands on one of DJs. This is Shut Your Clap Trap. Let's talk about him. See the worst oh, part of the movie? God. Yes, Ooh, easily. I yeah, think so. I think, I think it's possible. Yeah, it's it's every joke is so annoying. It's so over the top. It's Jack Black brings nothing to this. Um, this well, could have been AI so many, generated voice. They put so many effects on his voice that it barely matters that it's him. Yeah, it could, it, could, it should have been a computer. Um, I, I, you know, I'm going to say this worse than Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Claptrap is worse than Jar Jar Binks. Oh on, like, yeah. The annoying scale in a movie. I think, um, I think there's like one major thing about him. Like, I mean, yes, his jokes aren't funny and he's very annoying, but I think that there's like one story problem with him or tone problem. I don't know how you describe it Mm -hmm. that I think makes the movie a lot worse. (laughs) Okay. What is besides the fact that he's annoying, which is that. So like first scene him showing up at Lilith's campfire and being like, I'm programmed to help you. Blah, blah, blah. Is like, he like rapidly shifts between two different modes Mm. Uh, which is at first he like in some points he's like you accidentally shot me again ha ha like just like over the top cheerful like doesn't notice how mean and violent the world around him is etc and like that's a tone that's a tone to go with this character and that can be funny right but then also at other points he's like you have a bad personality I hope you die yeah. And like that's completely like is he a total goofball doesn't understand what's happening or is he this like very aware cynical character who has to talk in this upbeat tone. Those are two like comedy things you can do, but they're two completely different characters. And the fact that they're trying to do both of them with him, I feel like clashes against itself and like makes you feel like the movie doesn't know what it's going for because it's it's like it's the whole problem with the jokes in this movie and begin and like the world of this movie it's like it can't decide if it wants to be like wacky or if it wants to just be like snarky yeah also he's annoying did i say yeah, that he's annoying but he's not the right kind of annoying you know TJ, do you agree? Would you like to say something about that? Yeah, I agree. Okay, great. I've been speaking yeah. this whole time, obviously. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's annoying, right? Like, it's like that thing where it's like you can be annoying. Jar Jar's the same problem, but I think Jar Jar, again, in retrospect, is way better. But, like, I compared this in my video to, like, um, that I did about this to Gurr from Invader Zim because he's the same character. He's the shitty robot that's supposed to help you but isn't really that helpful and he's mostly annoying. But, like... There's an art to the timing of the humor that just makes it fun to watch versus just also annoying for you, the audience. And like, they didn't do that, so it's just annoying. Like, it's <laughs> there's no, it's no fun. It's it, yeah. And there's like three characters in this movie that are that, so it's very. That's the worst part. Is well, and it's not. Bullying. It's not even like. It's not even like he seems to like very much annoy everyone who's around him. Like they just are just like, yeah, oh, this might as well happen. That's true. Like Kate Blanchett, it's like, would you please stop? But like Gurr like makes Zim go insane. Mm-hmm. But it's like the claptrap makes me go insane. Like yeah. everyone else there is just like, nah, this may as well happen. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. everyone. You can in convince a while, me there. Is... <laughs> Sorry, you go. I was gonna say you can convince me there is no tra- claptrap. Considering how much yeah, right. none of the actors really actually react to this this stupid robot, like sometimes well, it makes the little girl laugh, but like for the most part, it might as well just be a figment of her imagination. Well, I have to imagine there was nothing on set, so it's probably just oh, easier yeah. for them to pretend he wasn't there. I've read that he recorded all of his lines before they shot it. Um, oh my god! I don't know if that's I don't know if that's true, but I did read that somewhere, and that would that feels possible. You know, it feels very possible. Him and Krieg. uh, Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, with him, it's also like 
Well, we'll get to it. But yeah, Claptrap is um, he's how does he work in the games, DJ? Like, what's his vi- is he, is his vibe different? Like, I, yeah, I think the vibe is different because the writing might be bad, sure, but he's not supposed to come off as annoying, and he doesn't follow you everywhere. He just shows up places, right? He's not mm. always in your party. You go to Sanctuary of Firestone, it's like, oh, look, it's Claptrap, right? Mm. Um. But he's he's really just kind of supposed to give you like a state of the world kind of thing, right? Um, but you know, and and he'll like do a little funny thing where it's like, ah, oh, I tripped over a thing. Sometimes there's side quests that fully involve claptrap, and like it's fine. But like it's not. This is not the vibe. It's just supposed to be like little wacky robot that's hanging around, but isn't constantly around me because I think that would be nuts. Yeah, I think I think no. the thing you said about Gur though is definitely true. Where it's like. Yeah, part of the problem, part of the reason he doesn't work is because nobody else is operating on that level of like wackiness. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it just feels like this weird, annoying offshoot and not like a thing that the other characters are bouncing off of and like, you know, making comedy with. It's just, he's supposed to be the whole comic relief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also think yeah. in a group like this, especially in like a team, you know, like ensemble, Characters, like, obviously we have Lilith who doesn't like him, which, sure, that's an option, uh, especially because he's her kind of babysitter or whatever. Uh, but then there's usually another character that is does like him or something, that, like, vibes with him. And there's, like, the, the um, Tiny Tina does that a little bit, but, like, there's no, like, and I think this is a problem overall in this movie. All the characters could just switch lines at any moment and more or less it would work. <laughs> like, yep. it's yeah. so, it's so arbitrary that... Yeah, like, I think it would be fun. I think it would actually be a really good character trait if, like, Roland really liked Claptrap or something. And he was like, well, look at this guy. And everybody else was like, he's so <laughs> annoying. Like, what are you talking about? He's awesome. And then, like, they just, that, that was just the thing. Um, but, yeah, they don't they do not do that at all. Um, instead, he, yeah, he might as well not be in the movie. But, you know, they got Jack Black. Pretty good. Have her find the hologram that tells her mommy she loves her so much. Like, it could be a little disc, just anything. Oh yeah, or- that's that's actually a huge misunderstanding with this movie, right? Claptrap should have been a character they run into yeah. at Sanctuary as like a little aside. Should should not be like a member of the party. Like, fundamentally, doesn't understand what the point of Claptrap is. Yeah, because if it's if he's a member of the party, then give him a gun or something. Yeah, like right? he's just rolling around in there, like doing nothing. So I don't know, man. Let's put put a little, I don't know, something oil slick on his head that he can use as a weapon. Because <sighs> otherwise, what's the point? Like, there's one bit where they fucking have to. I can't remember where this is, but someone has to like toss him somewhere, and it's like, yeah, getting this thing anywhere is so inconvenient because I can't even yeah. climb a stair. So yeah, I do think I think the bit if I was taking a shot at this, he wouldn't be in the party, but he'd just show up everywhere they already go. And like they they get to somewhere, he would be like, "Hey, here we're in sanctuary. Uh, that's where you gotta go. All right, goodbye." He'd have some other purpose, but like that would be it. And then you go to the next place, and he'd already be there. And you'd be like, "How did you get here?" And he'd be like, "I don't know, but I'm here now." And then just yeah. keep going. It'd be like the Isma joke in the end of Emperor's New Groove. And it's like <laughs> maybe there's 15 clap traps, maybe there's one, and he has a system of tubes that he's using to navigate this planet. But yeah, you definitely don't want him in every scene, especially because it's expensive. He's a computer guy. Like, this is the thing with these guys. I get putting, you know, the psycho in every scene just so you have bodies. But that's like an actor. This is like, yeah, I guess you get to work an animator to death. So that's actually not really a person at all. But like, I don't know. It seems like it would be much more work. Um, <laughs> or have that yeah. guy like in uh, that Call of the Wild movie where you have the guy pretending to be a dog. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That's really funny. Yeah, that would be cool. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm 90% sure Jack Black was never on set with any of these people. There's uh, no way. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I spent the wheel again. Speaking of wheels, is tick, 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 tick. Land on one of Diggins. This is bad ADR lands. It's very good. So wait, what does this mean? Why are you, why would you point this out? <laughs> well, Mando... Uh, you know, there's a few things I could point out, but let me start at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> uh, when we get to Lilith bringing in her bounty to some bar she apparently hangs out on a different planet. 
Oh yeah. Um, where we're following her from behind her head <laughs> and every once in a while, the guy whose face we don't see and her whose face we don't see have some banter that doesn't like change the way they're moving or interacting with each other at all. Yeah. And then they pull up to a bar and she tells someone to move and then she physically moves them. And then she sits down and says some lines where you can see her face move that could easily have been the first thing she said, and it wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be one of these, huh? Then we get a bunch of narration from her that also I'm, was, I'm listening to, and I'm like, none of this needs to be here. I mean, other than you, other than an executive watched this and was like, people will be confused if you land on a planet and don't tell them what that planet's whole deal is. They'll be like, what's this planet's whole deal? You got to add in some narration that says what the planet's deal is. Well, it's, it's especially crazy because she gets to the planet and then, yeah, in her little, you know, her little like uh, film noir, whatever. It's like, hey, I used to come to this planet, but I don't like it. Vault hunters are here and they're fucking up the whole planet looking for the vault. And then she gets on the bus and the bus auto plays a video that's like, hey, you're on this planet where vault hunters are fucking mm-hmm. up the planet looking for the vault. So, like, we have that in the movie already. I There's stuff, there's stuff that I do think the – like, there's purposes that the ADR here serves with the um, narration that I think is bonkers. Um, but, yeah, that specific function of, like, just talking about the world is, like, the, the movie – goes out of its way to do that twice. Like the guy's giving the tour and he plays the video in the van. Just let that be it. That's pretty much it. But again, it's part of this movie where like she's list- she's getting this exposition and I'm like, I don't need to hear this. I just fucking heard it from you. And she's like, I don't need to hear this. Turn this off. And the guy's like, no. And it's like, good. Nobody's having fun. I'm glad we're all <laughs> miserable here. <laughs> wasting our time with this. Like, you could just cut to her getting off the bus. Oh, yeah, any other fun ADR in this movie? I feel, I think there's a certain point. I forget when this happens. But there's one point where Lilith and Tina are talking. And Ooh. Tina says something. We cut to Lilith's face. She doesn't she like reacts but doesn't say anything. And then we cut back to Tina's face and then she says something. So I know what you're referring to. It's actually a claptrap bit, unless this happens a couple times. But it, specifically in the beginning, claptrap's like, "I could find Tiny Tita. I'll use the extranet or whatever." And then you Echo, cut to her yeah. face, nothing. And then you cut back to claptrap, and she says, "What's the extranet?" And then he's like, "The extranet is a computer thing that I can use." And it's like that is 100% a note that he says extranet later in the movie, and people were like, I, "No one knows what that is," um, <laughs> which like. Fair. It's a really stupid thing that he could just scan a little picture and find her because nobody else seems to be able to do that. But, um, you know, just like write the movie better so that that's not how it works. I don't know. I refuse. Well, which of the 10 yeah. people who wrote this movie are you going to tell that to? I don't know. Yeah, right. Which Maybe for once probably... is not me saying a large number for exaggerations. There have been 10 people who have done screenwriting work on this movie over the course of its nine years in development. Uh, and that's a lot of people, so it must be good, you know? Like, one person writes a saying. movie, and it's like, that's pretty good. But then another guy gets in there and writes even better stuff? That's double good, you know? And one of them is very obviously mm-hmm. a pseudonym for yeah. someone else who did work on it and didn't want to be credited. That's so funny. that it's. Do you know this story, DJ? I don't. So, the rumor that has not been fully confirmed, but it's more or less true, is um, Craig Mazin... Uh, who wrote uh, a lot of stuff like people sure people normal. use his yeah you use his last two credits and he seems like he's a fucking genius uh, but he also wrote like epic movie and stuff so he's all across <laughs> okay. the board but um he wrote yeah he wrote Chernobyl and Last of Us movie uh, or show um so like not the game and the, the or game yeah. is pretty much the show anyway but like he's you know he's made a thing that's successful before uh, apparently did whatever a draft of this and uh yeah eli roth did a bunch of other stuff to it and then he decided to be recredited as joe crombie who is uh not a real person apparently and is the other person on the credits of the movie as the writer with eli roth so 
Yeah. Wow. There we yeah. go. A lot expecting really good things from Joe Crombie in the future. You know? <laughs> you think this is like a what's his name situation? Like a um like a Mad Men situation? Like you could just go into Hollywood and be like, it's me, Joe Crombie. Everyone will be like, I didn't know you were real. And then you just assume that guy's identity and become the worst screenwriter in Hollywood, I guess, or something. <laughs> just an incredibly failed. Yeah. Um, Isn't that just a Arrested Development bit? That's true. Yeah, she does. I can't remember exactly what she does, but yeah, maybe. It's, uh, Tobias goes around, like, pretending oh, to be someone right. who works there. goes like, this Bluth guy's incredible. Mm-hmm. This Bluth. I'm <laughs> sick of hearing about Bluth. And then maybe... Like scams yeah. her way into a meeting, and the producer sees that her name is maybe Bluth, and it's like, oh, so you're that Bluth everyone's been talking about. Hmm. Yeah, that's how it goes. Um, what about you, DJ? Do you have any good ADR lines and or bits that you were like, that's fucking insane? Uh, not not ADR lines. I mean, insane bits. Ugh, oh my god! Insert everything with claptrap. Um, it, it honestly, I, I I know I keep going back to this, but it is wild that they decide to um like who was the woman that played the the Crimson Lance lead uh person? No idea, nobody. Like I was mean, she's not a person. She's oh, a person, okay. but like I would never. No, she wasn't a person. She was made entirely out of AI. <laughs> AI. She's also Craig Mason or whatever the guy from Seven. <laughs> Last of Us. No, she's a person. But, I did see her on Love It or Leave It this week or something. She was a guest, and she seems cool, but like she's not like a person I'd expect to, anybody to know. Okay, well, well. Anyway, the, the the fact that she gets vaporized is wild. That's crazy. Like they didn't need to do that. They just were like, we're vaporizing a person, and you know, why doesn't she get a cool shield? You know, oh, why doesn't she get a cool shield? O- only Daddy Atlas gets a cool shield. Wait, yeah. you know, how could you possibly not know who this person is? Janina Gavankar was on Arrow. She was on Arrow, so I'm looking it up right now as well. She was also in Alan Wake too. She, I, so I think looking at her credits and now thinking about the the movie or the um conversations she had uh on the podcast that's new she seems like she does a lot of video game work she's the main voice for the evil main character not evil but like empire main character in star wars battlefront 2 um that's like you know the protagonist of that game so she does that and yeah she was on arrow but i couldn't figure out what character she was supposed to be like i didn't recognize the name um but she seems cool from the interview i saw she like knows games and likes them and i cannot imagine being her and in this you know like because like jamie lee curtis how does she know that the movie sucks she doesn't know any of this shit you know but like this person's like oh no you guys are doing this wrong and this wrong and this wrong Uh uh-oh like it's got doesn't jamie lee curtis like go to conventions and cosplay though oh really jamie lee curtis is like I think it's like her son is really into Warcraft, and so she does a bunch of Warcraft stuff because he likes she it. She does. Look at that. Warcraft in One Piece, apparently. Um, the worst kind of person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> An um, a person who likes anime? Ugh. Anime. One Piece specifically and Warcraft specifically are like, that's a specific kind of person. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she... Uh, she uh, officiated her daughter's Ru- daughter Ruby's wedding in a World of Warcraft costume. So that's cool of her, I guess. But I imagine, saying, I imagine maybe she knows video games. It's possible. Borderlands is such a specific game, though. That's the thing. It's like if you told me she played, yeah. you know, like a game that was popular twenty years ago, and then kind of back to now. Even like Even Super like Mario. Halo. Yeah, or Halo. I'd be like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know, because you see like pictures of like fucking Bob Odenkirk playing Super Smash Brothers behind the scenes of, you know, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And you're like, I guess that's what people are doing. Um, but this, like the idea of Jamie Lee Curtis, 40 year old Jamie Lee Curtis sitting down for a game of Borderlands just does not compute for my brain. I don't, <laughs> I just don't see it. Even if a kid like was like, please, I think she'd be like, listen you get the warcraft thing out of me that's as good as you're getting i'm not playing this shit <laughs> um but yeah uh what's he gonna say oh my favorite idr this this line blew me away when they said it in the movie um i don't remember the exact line but she gets to the planet you guys probably remember this bit because it's so cool and iconic she gets to pandora uh cape Blanchett, and she steps out of her stupid little thing and says in her head to herself like I got to Pandora. It's fucking vault hunters everywhere. I hate it. 
I talked to some kids and found out where to go. And then the next thing she <laughs> says is, and then I fought some psychos. And then there's like shots, a couple of them disconnected, but like of her in slow motion blowing up a bunch of guys and then just nothing. And you're like, what was this in the first draft of this script? This was the whole thing. Like, I, I kept I kept waiting for the next part, and then I interrogated one of them, or and then they told me where to go or whatever. But it's just nothing. It's just like, then I fought some psychos, and then I had lunch. You oh know, like God, I forgot about that. You're right. So awkward. Um, you think in the R-rated version, it was like, and then I, I ate one. fucked all like, the psychos. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> good for her. Good, good you didn't see the like. problem was they had her rip out one of their skeletons and then do a whole fight using that skeleton oh, as a weapon God. set to an in sync song. And so oh. last week, Deadpool Wolverine <laughs> came out and they were like, fuck, we got to take Sick. that out. And this is the best they could do. <laughs> That's the worst, you know, is when you do something and then Deadpool and Wolverine does it. You hate to see it. it. Bummer. Um, I kind of expected that the bit where they're in the little tunnel and they're like, we have to go into this tunnel, but watch out because it'll burn you. Uh, that, that, that feels like something that would be ADR, but it's not. But like, that bit goes nowhere. I do think that's, that's an insane little scene where they like go shuffle their way on the little tunnel thing. Because it's like, yeah, that's not a scene. It's just like a thing they <laughs> shot and managed that's to put into the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really no- is like, it's like this movie happened in real life, you know? And, like, they had to do all this stuff. It's like the Lincoln movie where it's like, this shouldn't end with him getting assassinated, though. And it's like, well, that's how he died. So, it's like, I guess that makes it into the movie. It's like this. It's like <laughs> they did shuffle down that corridor that one time. So we got to um, put it in because people will complain if we don't. I mean, yeah. DJ, you played the game. So, you know there's that incredibly iconic shuffling over acid se- segment of the game that everyone it's- always cites as one of their favorite bits. Well, because it really took a lot of just dexterity to tilt the controller ever yeah. so slightly. Because you push it too hard, you fall in, you die, and you, know, you can't go too slow because then the grates start falling. So it's like precision, but with the right amount of speed. Yeah, yeah that's See? pretty good. Yeah, that's why they had to put it in there. So I'm glad it's in the movie, honestly. Me too. Uh, speaking of that, DJ spun the wheel, landed on one of yours. This is N A R. Explain yourself, okay. sir. What is this? Okay, 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 okay. So, um, Anthony Hopkins, uh, I don't know about famously, but allegedly, uh, when he gets a script, he like reads it over and especially for the, you know, for your rebel moons and your Thors. How dare you? you I know where this is going. So I know the, the idea that he would even touch the rebel moon script with the pen that writes these words is insane. (laughs) And and probably not Westworld, but maybe. But um, he, he just like reads to and and he thinks it's a big circle to some portion, and he writes N A R, which stands for No Acting Required, yeah. which is basically him being like, I I just gotta say lines for this part. I don't have to act. They just have to say, I cast you out, Thor Odinson. And um, I assume the entire Rebel Moon script he just circled with NAR. There just... once was the Crodandians, and they <laughs> conquered the galaxy. That little monologue he does. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and the other robot parts that that happen, right? Yeah, uh, I that bet one would even get fucked up. Is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel uh, like he kind of. A... It'd be funny if you handed him a script and you were like, "All right, this is Transformers Five, so you know, do your thing." And he just read it all and went, "We're gonna act the shit out of this. <laughs> Every single word. This is gold." <laughs> I've been waiting to play against a Cogman type my whole life, so <laughs> like, are you no sure? No NAR is detected. No nope. NAR, just A R all over the scripts. <laughs> Way to go! Um, I, I I must assume that Kate Blanchett does a similar method because she NAR the shit out of this script, bro. Oh, yeah. Like I, it was, it is not a bad Kate Blanchett performance, but she shows up. Says her lines, look where she needs to, and pieces out of there. Well, I feel like and, it's like, similar to Anthony Hopkins doing that, which is like Anthony Hopkins just reading some lines is like cool. Yeah. In a yeah, way yeah, that yeah. many other actors just reading right. a line is not. 
Yeah. Right, but like you have Anthony Hopkins, you know, as Odin at most points, but then like Anthony Hopkins in like Westworld, right? Where it's like he is acting in Westworld. Oh, no, right? no, no. Like, I, he, I fully understand yeah. what he means, which is like he just has to say the line. He's not like really conveying yeah. any deep emotion or anything. Right, right. Or like having to inhabit oh. the character. Uh, yeah. But like he's still like doing a good job. Mm-hmm. Sure. I, I, but I, I guess the point of Kate Blanchett, who I would put like on that caliber of actress, uh, is incredible. Mm, Kate and Blanchett, here, actress, extraordinary. Kate Blanchett, actress. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm woke. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, if you were woke, then <laughs> I, you would just call her an actor because we I was should never say acting gender person. Term for that. Yeah, I think it's got to uh, okay. be a little bit more. Well, Kate Blanchett acting in movie. Mm. Uh, she like like she's usually awesome and i'm not saying she's not awesome here but i would say she mostly showed up and collected a check which is fine good for her more yeah more people should do that you should go get your check and then just like get the well, fuck out of there okay more people should do that when you read the script and go oh yeah no this is bad <laughs> okay like <laughs> right, yeah, I, I like it when she puts in a good performance yeah, yeah. but yeah more right. more actors Sorry, should yeah. take a shitty video game movie like this and go I think I can do about as much. Like, I don't think there's as much yeah. I can do here. Well, I know? have great news about the Borderlands movie, Nando. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that? That's what pretty much everyone's doing. Absolutely not. Which, which is... Well, okay. I I guess we could leapfrog this to, to, to talk well, about... We're talking about the quality of the acting, right? So I feel like yeah. it's the perfect time yeah, to okay. ask Nando, who's your one good actor? Yeah, I think Kevin Hart is good in this. I'm not even oh, going to pretend. I, I think he's miscast. I think everybody in this movie is miscast. But um, yeah, I think that true. I think that going into this movie, I'm like, oh, it's going to be so fucking annoying because they cast a short guy to play Roland, the you know bigger guy who's cool and tough and stuff, and it's going to be nothing but fucking. I thought you were cool and tough. No, I'm just short. I hate being short. Everyone's mean to me. And instead, he played it 100% straight. And I, he had a couple of little jokes that worked. I liked when, I, I don't, I love it, but I liked it when Jamie Lee Curtis takes the gun and she's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I took the gun. So you ask for the gun. Um, I thought that was cute. I don't know. I think he was better in it than I was expecting. Okay. Uh, see, uh, Here's we had a miscommunication here. I fully understand what you're saying now. See, I thought you were saying that Kevin Hart was doing a good job as an actor in this movie, which is an insane mm. thing to say. But what I you think mean that. is uh -huh. judging by the standards of the typical Kevin Hart performance, he did much better than usual. And I can I can get on board with that statement. I think Kevin Hart's performance in this works better than anyone else's performance in this. That's what I'll say. I don't think Kate Blanchett's performance in this is good. Like, I don't think it's I don't terrible. Think his performance is good either. I think it's mostly nothing. Now, if you I consider it, that normally his performance is bad, well, and then this one too. is fine, then like, yeah, it's huge leap up in quality. I don't know. I think yeah. part of it I, is that I think he has like an energy that no one else in this movie is able to muster, which is this like everybody is so dull. Except for Jack Black, I guess. But even like Tiny Tina, Jamie Lee Curtis, the bad guy for sure. They're all just so... How dare I don't know. Edgar Ramirez is giving so much. Horrible. I like. <laughs> I don't know who this is, this man. But <laughs> just... And I don't think it's his fault. But my God, what a role that is yeah. nothing. Um, I, I think I'm mostly with Diggins. I think that... I think Cape Blanchett is doing the best, but it's all relative. Um, I think Kevin Hart is mostly doing Kevin Hart. Like mostly I don't like think, I agree with Nando he, that he's not doing Kevin Hart. He's doing a different yeah. thing. And that thing is like base level fine. I don't think it's an especially <laughs> good performance. Yeah, I guess it's I mean, I it there's a, there's a couple parts where like I think it leaks out, but yeah, I think that's mostly right. Like the him saying it's like, no, I got piss in my mouth, right? Like that's like, oh, it's here, it's like classic Kevin Hart. And I guess I had it took me a while to get past that, but it, also he's not in a lot of the movies. Yeah, that's another thing I like about Kevin Hart. <laughs> it's it's a, <laughs> he managed to not be in it. It's a low usage rate, so then like yeah. when he is there, it's like a, it doesn't get stale, but like like. And I agree, Lando, a lot of it's low energy, low, low energy, low energy all around, way low energy. 
We like that for a nickname, yeah. yeah. Low energy, low energy Lilith. Uh, mm. Right off. Oh the top. my god, yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, Kooky, <laughs> Claptrap, and uh, <laughs> what uh, was uh, the uh, other one? Uh, Robalo or whatever. <laughs> Boland. <laughs> <laughs> Although. I have a quick question, though. Uh, Nando, when did you get access to all that mining city in Vespin? I, You know what? I've always had it, and uh, I just don't make a huge deal out of it because I don't want the Empire to get on my case. I like that, you know, we get to govern ourselves the way we want. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And, um, uh, I admire yeah. your taste in capes, though. I think I really wish that capes for men were back in fashion. I, I do, Same. too, but I just don't think everybody can do it as well as me. And that's why my movie got canceled or something. You know, it's great that that movie that they were going to make is a shame. isn't happening anymore. But instead, we're going to get fucking Rebel Moon 8. Um, <laughs> yay, yeah, yeah, yay. Do you think uh, DJ understands why we're doing this? I think he does by now, yeah. I There's no way I called you later. You, you, you certainly no did, way. yeah. 100%. Because you were, you were saying low energy, low energy, low energy, and then you tried to say Nanto and Kanek. All smushed together, but yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, I can't great. wait to listen to that one back. I can't wait to listen to that one back. Um, but yeah, no, the low so, en- energy performances are pretty insane in this, considering yeah, it's and, a and, video and, game. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's just it's it's bad. It's bad. Kate Blanchett's the best, but just because she's Kate Blanchett, everyone else just Kate, like Kevin Hart, fine, but still mostly. I mean, I mean it all goes so. back to like the writing in the games. Apparently, is bad. I've never played them, so I don't know. <laughs> I agree. Um, I think two is a little bit better, but for the most part, yeah, one like, is pretty bad. But like the thing about them is the like Deadpool esque, like yeah. wacky meta commentary, ultra violence sort of thing, and the yes. fact that they're not doing any of that means that there's just nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah. He was pretty good, wasn't he, Kevin Hart? Who else was bad in it? I think I think uh, the Tiny Tina character. So, from what I understand, Tiny Tina is not usually this, right? She is no, not even. There's close. another character that's this, the little magic yes. space baby or whatever. Okay, mm-hmm. I just kind of smushed these two together, which is insane. Yeah, doesn't make any sense. But well, Tiny Tina Tiny is Tina is a character people like, so they wanted her yeah. to be in the movie. It makes yeah, sense. You got to do the Tiny Tina thing. No, not where the fuck this was. We don't got to do was, anything. Bitch. That's true. Yeah, you don't have to do anything, and maybe that would be better. It's just a video game, DJ. It's not like it's a real art. Yeah, Ugh, you're right. Um, who else was in this? Oh yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. Horrible. <laughs> I hated it. Oh, I, I, I get it that she was making choices, but I hated every second of it. Well, she, I feel like she tried to give her character a personality. Yeah. Uh, in a valiant struggle against the script, and that just made it feel kind of weird. <laughs> so weird. I don't know. This is a character from the I mean, they're all characters from the game, but, like, what's her vibe? Is she, like, you know, a little Professor Frank type or something? Because I feel like that's the energy that she was, she was giving us. Well, only person here who's played the games? Yeah, I can't what remember. What's think? this character's name, even? Tannis. Tannis. Yeah, what's Tannis like yeah, Tannis. in the game, DJ? She so she's supposed to be this like wacky, eccentric, uh oh, like, like scientist person who she's like giving you a lot of your quests when you go back to Sanctuary, um, but like very manic energy, which obviously is not what Jamie Lee Curtis is doing at all. Um, but that's like her vibe. Um, but yeah, she's an expert like on the keys and she figures out a lot of what you have to do. Um, but she's like kind of a kind of I don't want to use the word psycho because there's psychos in the game That's and true. they're like rabid people. But like she's supposed to be kind of running like all over the place. Manic is the I think the best word. Okay. Um doesn't translate at all. But and again, you don't have to import the characters from the game. I even think there's like an interview or something with e- Eli Roth. There like, is, I wasn't yeah. casting for the game. I was casting for the script. Oh, according to him, he said he was casting the best actors available. So he just Which, like Mm. It's like a fantasy football team made of quarterbacks. It doesn't work like that. Like, you need to cast the positions that you have. And, you know, like, I do think Cate Blanchett is insanely miscast in this. Um, yeah, not that oh, the, the movie is good. You said it before. They all are. But Everyone's miscast. Yeah, like, okay, let's let's go through this real quick. First of all, they're all, like, 20 years older than their characters in the games for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't whatever. understand it. Like, 
fine. Because, well, some of it's weird because their moms and dads, like, she's, what I kind of assume is Kate Blanchett, like, Jamie Lee Curtis is Kate Blanchett's, like, grandmother, or godmother, right? Like, yeah. you would assume then that makes her around the same age as Kate Blanchett's mother, right? Right. But yes. Jamie Lee Curtis is, like, maybe 10 years older than Kate Blanchett in yeah, real life, so... Well, they made her hair white. Yeah, <laughs> they made her hair white, and they made Kate Blanchett's ancient. hair red. Wait a so second. That means that one's oh, old yeah, and no. one's young. That's how yeah, it works. Kate, Kate Blanchett is currently 55. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm betting Jamie Lee Curtis probably um, probably in her mid-60s. Uh, but, yeah, that that's insane to me. Obviously, Roland is supposed to be tall and not small, but whatever. Um, but, yeah. Who would, you, who would you expect for a role like this, DJ? Who's your... Oh my gosh, who's my like crazy, wacky, all over the place actor or someone who I think could pull it off for like Tannis? And it's a woman, um, so like that's like, I feel like we need a like Kate McKinnon or something for that. That's a really, yeah, mm. nailed it. Yeah. Say, no notes, yeah. I'm trying to think. Because it almost is like the character from Barbie, honestly. Right, yeah, I'm trying to think of recent movies that have a guy like this, and yeah, it's her. Um, And then who's your who's your main character? Who's your Lilith my Lilith is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like, like I'm, I'm probably going for like a Haley Steinfeld. Okay. Yeah. She could That's, do it. I think so. I think the guys uh, on the red letter media review suggested, um, Charlize Theron. And that feels right. What the script was written for is someone hmm. who's like a little bit older, but like an action star, but still has the vibe of like young and fun. Not that I think she's like okay. that necessarily um, that or scarlett johansson that, that might yeah be another one and she can play any race direction. so she could be yeah. any character she wants you mm-hmm. know she could be a tree that's true um, um yeah, I, and I assume the red letter media guys love this movie by the way oh yeah i mean they they didn't like it but also um i think they were all struggling to be like what is this even supposed to be which is like if you haven't played this game it's so confusing i agree um, it is but it's also that's the thing. It's not the kind of trash that is fun, I would say, because it's not taking enough risks to be interesting. It's just like a product more than anything else, and that's the part yeah. that makes it upsetting. And that's why I think Madam Web is, is better in every single way. Um, <laughs> but because Madam Web is baffling, yeah, because Madam Web is insane, and they're all doing whatever, dancing on the table and shit. There's nothing even close to that in this game. Um, it wishes, yeah, a spider person, right? Like that's. <laughs> Nobody could, and also like, yeah, this is yeah, this movie stinks. Um, but I spun the wheel again. One of Diggins's, and this may be our last one, honestly, because this is just there's no time to explain. Um, there's no time to explain, guys. Yeah, there's so many points in this movie where any reasonable human being would have been like, okay, wait, hold on, like, what does any of that mean, and why yeah. are you doing any of this? And at no point does anybody ask those questions. <laughs> like I already brought up the one with Lilith, where the reason the way she gets involved is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, in a better movie, that would be her lying, and she's like, "I'm gonna stick with them, uh, so I can snatch Tina at some point, right. and then she would grow to know them better." And then that's what the Mister Justin could be based on is her finally telling Atlas, like, I've decided I'm not doing it. But Tina's like, but you were doing it. I can't trust you, blah, blah, blah. At least that's, right. you know, that's that's a real thing instead of not. Or she, or she finds, like, a recording in her in her jacket that's like, hey, I found Tina. I'm going to follow her for a little bit or something. And then it's like, oh, she was actually working for my dad the whole time. Yeah. That's if the movie was good instead of bad. But yeah. then also, like, as the movie, like, like I said with Roland also, we never learn how he got involved yeah. in any of this or why. Oh my God. It's wild. I, I have he, no idea why, why he did this. I know in the game he, he is previous, and I think they might allude to it here. He's a previous member of the Crimson Lake. Yes. They explicitly say That's that. why Bobby Lee knows him. Right. At the bar. And, like, and that's why the other woman, like the one from, the, you know, Arrow knows him. Right. But they don't say why that matters in, in here. Yeah, it seems like he defected, but there's no like great reason why. It's not what I don't think it is and what the movie kind of seems to think it is, is he's a character who is working for the Crimson Lance or whatever, uh, saw they were experimenting on a little girl and rescued her and decided to defect. 
that's that I I don't think that is said in the script, but I think that's the character they're kind of setting him up as. And that's uh, a classic character archetype. Yeah. Like that totally works. But like they never establish that. Mm-hmm. Um but then like the end of the movie, these just come hard and fast. Yeah. <laughs> Where, so let me just full like say the things I don't understand as someone who never played these games. Okay. I don't understand what is special about Lilith that allows her to okay. do all this stuff. Okay. Um, I don't understand uh, why opening the vault gave her superpowers. Okay. I don't mm. understand why Tina doesn't work if she's also, if she was like specifically like genetically engineered to do this. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't understand what the vault is supposed to be or why there's a big monster in it. Sure, sure. That's a problem. Um, I think those are the main ones. So which is to say, I don't understand any plot development in the last half of, in the last third of the movie. Yeah, that's a good question. DJ, I was wondering, what is the deal with Lilith's powers like in, because I know she has the power to teleport like naturally usually in yeah, the game, but so, the fire thing is the development eventually, or is that not? Yeah, so the, the teleport thing is just part of her being a siren. A siren is just people who, like, have those teleportation powers, but then in the second game, she, I forget exactly how it plays out, but that's, a, she starts developing, like, the fire powers, because she's even more powerful than you'd imagine. Um, she's actually kind of like a linchpin in the second game as, as a very crucial part of the plot. Um, but like yeah, the, the the reason she could do that is because she is a person that has these powers. Sirens exist in universe. Um, Why does that make her able to open the vault? So yeah, in the games, a person doesn't open the vault. Just you, the keys open the vault. Mm. There's no. That's it. You get the keys, you open the vault. Bada boom. No like extra step with a person. But then, what is the magic baby in one of the later games that they kind of trick into being Tiny Tina here? Right. I have to imagine uh, that's what they are, or they're some sort of just like Iridian, you know, baby who everybody's after, but not because they're going to get in the vault, just because that blood is useful. Unless I'm, and again, I haven't played these games forever, but I don't think that the Iridian baby was involved in opening the vault because I, I, I'm familiar with this, but I, again, I think that's a Borderlands Two thing, Hmm. and Borderlands Two is no, oh, oh, I, so sorry, there after after Borderlands One, it's revealed that there's like more vaults. You open first vault, and then it's like, oh, there's more vaults. And I think Handsome Jack needs Baby to, like, open a different vault or control the vaults or, like, something like that. So okay. I, I've been doing some reading when we've taken our probably expertly edited breaks. Yep. Obviously. Um, And so there's spoilers for a 15-year-old video game franchise. Um, Apparently, there's, like, a guardian angel character in the first one who in the second is revealed to be Handsome Jack's daughter. Is that oh, who you're yes, thinking of? Yes, that's it. Yes, mm. yes, yes. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Is yeah. she like that, part she, Uridian or whatever? Or she's just also a siren. What does being a siren yes. mean? It's just it means you have the teleport powers, right? But where do you get them from? Why is that you're something anybody can do? It. Okay. Nah, you're so it is you're probably like, like man. Yeah. yeah, or you yeah, have the yeah. blood of the ancient guys in your system or whatever. Um, yeah. Um, How come? Yeah, oh, right. yeah. Here's another question. Why doesn't anyone question that Tina is supposedly a like a genetically cloned pure blood Uridian, but looks like a human being? <laughs> also, what are the other classes in Borderlands One that these other characters are supposed to be? Okay, so Ro- Roland is like Gunner. Yeah, that's right. I forget what it's, I think. Sort of. Gunner. Then there's the Gunner. There's oh the, no, Gunner's back. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, there's the berserker Brick, who's just not in this game. No. He should have been the psycho. Yeah. It should have been Brick, but they're like, no, we don't want to explain another no, guy. And the psycho's like from Creed. the pictures. Yeah. Oh yeah, everybody loves Creed. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the hunter guy who I maimed, who has a little, a little a bird companion. Oh. I think it's uh, oh, what was his name? I want to say like Ezekiel, but that's definitely not it. Like from Mordecai. Mordecai. I'm making that up. I don't know yeah. if that's real. No, it's Mordecai. Jebediah. I, 
I'm gonna, you said I'm gonna Ezekiel, right. and I was just like, what's another like crazy old man in the hills name? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's Mordecai. Wow. Dickens, you're, you're, you're like an idiot savant or something like that. I'm definitely it is an Mordecai. idiot. Yeah, Brick, Lilith, Mordecai, and <laughs> It's Roland. crazy you guessed that correctly. Like, it's wild. It's pretty good. Um, anyway, so those are the four OG Borderlands classes. Don't ask me about two. I don't remember. You could be a siren again. I know there's another siren in Borderlands, yeah. too. I want to say one um, of the Borderlands is eventually you could, like, control robots or some shit. That was, like, I think a- you could be a claptrap in one of them. Oh, no, I'm thinking of, of an engineer. You had an engineer eventually who could, like, build turrets, I think, in two. Oh, That's the only yeah, one I played, yeah. and I kind of remember that being a character yeah. archetype. Um, so the point is sirens in the video game don't have anything to do with the vaults or any of this stuff that Lil co- can do with this one. Correct. But they correct. are kind of like the only magical thing it seems like in the first one besides like the monsters and stuff. It does feel like they're like part of a different game almost that showed up. You know? Well, like, magic I understand- or they got like psychic powers or something? Whatever that is, yeah. Well, psychic yeah. powers are the way you can put magic in your sci-fi game without having magic. Right, yeah. That's true. Well, because, like, they're, it's all it's all phase stuff. That's how, like, it's described. Mm. Also, for, forgot to mention this. So, the way so the, way the si- sirens work, and, and th- this is the game, this is not me. So, it could only be women, and it, there could only be six of them at a time. Oh. And then it's like it's like a Green Lantern, like when they, you die, then it goes to someone else. Okay, it's not bad. So, so yeah. it's kind of interesting. But they're so powerful, there could only be six, and you encounter three of them within the first two games. Yeah. All right. So here's here's the these are the, the six guys in the second game. You have Axton, the Commando, so he's the turret guy. Right. You have yeah, Gage, yeah. the Necromancer, summons a robot onto the battlefield that harasses enemy. Seems kind of stupid. Oh, yeah. Uh, Maya the Siren, so a different Siren yeah. character, can phase lock and stuff. Uh, Zero the Assassin, so this is like a spy, can be invisible and stuff. Salvador the Gunzerker shows up in this one. And then Creek the Psycho shows up in, in Borderlands 2. So, yeah. Pretty good. Did a good job. Good job, everybody. Yeah, they did we a did great it. job. Um, so the, yeah, so I guess what you're telling me, DJ, is there's no reason. They just made that up. And the fact that it isn't explained in the movie is just they didn't explain it. Now, Matt and DJ found this out because obviously he just challenged the gods here. My question for him will be, and I'm sure he'll give us a great answer for this in one second, is like, did he know? Did, did Lilith know that there's monsters in the vault? Because like, you know, the movie treats it like it's this like, oh, you shouldn't, if you go in the vault, you may die from the vault, right? Like, that's consequence to it. But like, does Lilith have that information or is she just guessing? Like, there'll probably be some bad thing in here if we go in. Like, a trick well, so it's like her mom said something, right? Like, the, well, she said, like, want to keep you saw. away from here. Like, she said, basically, right, keep... <laughs> we didn't want to open the vault, but not because, like, the reason that they say it in the, because the reason that that Roland has Tiny Tina and some of these other characters, like, we have to have I open the vault before he does, because there's some sort of supreme power that he's going to use and turn into weapons. And, like, up until I think the characters step through the vault, that's what they think is in there, is, like, yeah. a bunch of guns or something. But... It turns out to be a monster that's going to eat them. But I think it's, I guess it's weird because the movie treats Lilith's moment as like this trap where she tricked him to go into the vault where he would die. But like, it, where'd she get but, that from? But also he does suggest that all those floating cubes in there are technology are, that he could use. Yeah, I think that's right. They're pretty cool looking cubes. Um, Transformium, that was like that, you know, remember that in the Transformers <laughs> movie where there's like a little cube. Love it. The movie was good. Everyone knows uh, that technology comes in cubes. Yeah, it does. Well, I mean, I saw, to be fair, I saw someone point this out, like, on the internet. Have you ever seen, like, the actual, like, rocks that's cubes, you know? Excuse it's like me? A, it's like a mineral that just is a cube. You know oh, talking about? oh, sorry. Like, I had trouble with the phrase, I know. rocks is Rocks cubes. that's cubes. Uh, but, yeah, there's, like, a mineral that's just a cube. And, like, it, it, it just, it, it's, a, like... What is it? Um, and like, if you saw it in real life, uh, it's a cubic crystal systems of pyrite or something. Like, if you saw it out of nowhere, you'd be like, "Oh, this is from aliens or something," because this does not exist on Earth. Uh, so, oh, I have cool. cubic crystal pyrite. Yeah, like imagine just it does, discovering it cool. that. It looks so cool. Uh, so yeah, 
Uh, anything else about this movie? I know we kind of flew through the wheel, but we talked about it a lot. Um, yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention about Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, and this is something that was news to me. Apparently, she's kind of known for boobs and stuff, you know? Like, and I saw this in the Discord. Someone pointed this out, and they were like, that's like a costume, right? That's not her real cleavage. And I'm like, no, that is. And I was like, oh, I guess so. And then people talked to, I asked somebody about it, and they were like, yeah, it's weird. She only wears dresses that go up to her neck or like humongous, you know, like cleavage dresses to like award shows. So, wow. Good for her. I mean, she used to, she got it, she became famous being a screen queen. And, you know, that's kind right. of a prerequisite. And True Lies, your bosom. favorite movie, I mean, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I guess I, I don't know, I took it for granted, but. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. Um, good for her, I guess. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm glad she's keeping it tight. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Wow. Into her old age. Yeah. And I'm glad for her, you know. I'm All right. It's and for good, the World of know. Warcraft cosplay community, I'm sure that, you know, that's... <laughs> they, they love that about her. They probably love it, yeah. Yeah. No, she's taking some pride in her appearance. It's definitely not because she's a famous actress and you need to keep that sort of thing up to get work. <laughs> yep. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I guess I just don't think about it. I usually don't either. And I guess, I guess I'm just, her, a, I'm just a feminist, you know, you're, you're a better person. Yeah. Well, Damn, I'm a right? feminist yeah. who wants to empower her to have boobs in the movies or whatever. I'm just like, didn't know that was one of the things we're doing. So interesting. Mm-hmm. I know. So Cool. What's weird to me is that it's for the one scene in the entire movie, and then she covers up for the rest of the movie. Yep. Like, why did we do that? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they were. Maybe she was just like, you know what? This is too much. Everybody's everybody's acting bad because they're also distracted by my. (laughs) And then and then she put him away, and she was like, "Wait, actually, that probably isn't why everybody's acting bad." Probably has something to do with our director or something. I don't know. Um, How but, dare you impugn the good name of Eli Roth, a guy who's never made a good movie. <laughs> I watched Thanksgiving, and I think the beginning is kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, he's Eli Roth, man. I don't know why they thought he could do this. Like, Well, I think it makes sense in the version of this movie that has the ultraviolence. Because that's like a thing he does. Is now. He I mean, he does, like, gore and excessive violence. He doesn't really do wacky ultraviolence. Yeah. Um, but, th- you know, at least that's in the ballpark. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah, like, I do feel like this... He did, like, um, like I, I don't know, who would, you, who would you want to direct this movie? Assuming that you are getting a version, and assuming that you could make a good version of this movie. Like, who, who's, who's it for? I mean, since they just wanted to do... Guardians of the Galaxy again, I just might as well bring in James Gunn. Yeah. Honestly, though. I feel like you could get the Dungeons and Dragons guys probably pull out a pretty good movie, because this is pretty much what this is. Because they also did Guardians of the Galaxy Galaxy, again, except they did a good job, so we we weren't upset. We were just like, yeah, they basically did Guardians, but they did a good one, so that's cool. Who's the director who does, like, ultra-violence, like, super... Because obviously there's Deadpools. Tarantino. Yeah, but like in like a cartoony way. Not, know, well, obviously, yeah. But like, do we have one of those? That's like, you know, you obviously, you know what? Fucking Zack Snyder, I would like to see his version of this. <laughs> Honestly, I agree. Yeah, it would have been so serious. Yeah, it would have been great. Maybe good. It could Clap be worse. Could have been Anthony Hopkins. Wouldn't that have been <laughs> oh my fun? God. Yeah, actually, I would pay to see that. Yeah, yeah, that would have been great. A lot of NAR there, though. A lot of mm, NAR. Oh, yeah. Or, or do you think then he would he would write NAR and then Zack Snyder would secretly take the script and erase the end to trick him? You know, <laughs> yeah, That's probably what he does. Such a clever guy. Um, obviously, we're not going to get another one of these. Do you think we ever see another Borderlands anything for the rest of our lives, or is this brand been so tarnished by this bad movie that there will never be another show? Or movie, or even game. Well, we'll get four. Uh, We'll definitely get four. They came out with a game like last year. This franchise isn't dead. What? No, they didn't. Did they? Not like a mainline game, but like a game. Did they really? They released like uh, updates and stuff, and just I think you're, I think you're right, but I can't find a good list of it. Um, that feels impossible, but I take your. Oh, well. 
Tiny Tina's Wonderland update was in 2022. Mm. And then new Tales from the Borderlands, really? Okay. Yeah, I know. That was Two the thing that years I was ago. Like, Is that a real thing? Like, yeah. Jesus. I was close. I'm shocked. Because those are the ones, that's the ones where it's like the, the decision shit, right? Yeah. yeah I didn't I mean, know we were making those still. I thought those were all dead. I was pretty sure that company went under, right? Like, so. I guess maybe they get to make their own, but yeah, because it seems like this is uh, Gearbox, so they're just like, ah, we'll just do it ourselves. Fascinating. You don't need those guys. But yeah, they are working on a four. Oh, good. Maybe it'll be cool. Maybe. <laughs> I do like the couch co-op. I can't can't fully hate a game. One That's of the right, eight yeah. games that still does that. But yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll see if four does that. Um, Probably not. Yeah. Do you guys want to get for a classic segment? Recommend some things to the fine people? Uh, I guess. All right, DJ, uh, it's been two days. What is your new recommendation <laughs> for yeah, the people? The, the uh, exigencies of our uh, impossible scheduling have led to us recording these past two episodes very close to each other. Yeah. Uh, I, You know, th- th- this is tough. This is really tough because, you know, I, I, I haven't done anything new. I guess if I'm, like, wrecking something where I'm like, oh, what's, like, an old board game that I could, you know, t- talk about that's, like, a, a fun time to play. And, uh, you know, Sheriff of Nottingham's a great board game. It's, it's it a is. bluffing game where you have to, to uh, 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 sneak in uh, various goods into Nottingham over the sheriff's watchful eye. One person plays the sheriff. Everyone else um uh is trying to sneak in goods and you actually everyone gets to play sheriff you go around the table and everyone's a sheriff and you get to see how good or bad your friends aren't lying you get to learn how bad i am at lying and it makes me feel real self-conscious and stuff and you know like oh well why do i do this to myself so you know sheriff of nottingham is a very fun game don't forget that like Uh, any good law enforcement officer when you're the sheriff you can accept bribes yeah, that, that is a really good part of it. Um, you know, what, what's it worth? What's it worth to you? Uh, another thing, I don't know if it's like a recommendation, but it's kind of like story time. So uh, the Olympics just happened, and boy, were they great. Um, I sure did love the Olympics, but there, there was something. Did you guys follow any of the, the, the break? What, Diggins? So you got really upset when that Algerian woman won the boxing because you were like, I bet – that there's a gender thing going on here that will make me upset because I don't believe in transness, which what to is, be clear, not a trans woman. What's that this would be the fine most, if she was. She's not. What's this just, the most penis centric Olympics in our lifetime? <laughs> because between that and the pole vaulter yeah. guy, it's like everybody is just like, <laughs> does penis exist or not? Oh man. Show me penis know. so I can understand if they won the game fairly. You know he was breaking all the beds that night after I love that it. happened. Oh my god, yeah. Those stupid beds made of like a paper, you know, mache in a dream. Yeah. Uh so those are great things to talk about. Not what I wanted to talk about. Um, so I don't know if you guys followed any of the breaking stuff, like break dancing oh, that was done. Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. Uh, so this woman from Australia totally boofed it, hopped around did like she? a kangaroo. And she, it's, mm. I think so. Oh, yeah. Did um, she or did she do amazing? Yeah, and we're talking that, about it. That's that true. Was, <laughs> that's what's well, important in breakdancing. They, Explicity, yeah. you know. But it's an but, art form. That's what matters. Mm-hmm. My, my overall point was going to be that uh, uh, they're not bringing it back for 2028. Why? This is an, yeah, because no, it was I embarrassing. Why? I so and uh, I, I'm not saying we got to blame this Australian woman, but we might be able to. And uh, I, I just want to say, Australia, just reevaluate. Just reevaluate. That's all. Australia, we're stick that stay the course. You're doing Australia. great. I don't look. I, I feel bad for this woman because you don't want to become a meme for hopping around like a kangaroo during the Olympics. But well, first of all, she has a name. It's Raycon, and I'm shocked you haven't <laughs> said it yet because it's been. I, there was a big part of me that was like, "Is the news going to be Raycon? It can't be Raycon news because in two days when this podcast goes out, no one will remember who that is." But. I've been obsessed with ray gun, so... Um, okay, well... Do you well, know why the ray gun story is so interesting? Why is the ray gun story so interesting? Okay. So here's what we'll find out soon. I'm sure when the documentary about ray gun comes out, <laughs> from what I understand, the Australian, um, like, ballroom dancing federation kind of jacked up the search for the break dancers. Like, they kind of went to the Olympics, it seems like, and we're like, we'll do it. Don't worry. And oh. they've always wanted ballroom dancing to be an Olympic sport, but it never is. So they were like, fuck it, this will be our Olympic sport. And that's why the search was so bad 
for the Olympic breakdancer was because they were they didn't uh, know breakdancing very well, but they just wanted to like be in charge of Olympic dancing stuff. Um, so it's their fault mostly. It's not Ray. I mean, it probably is kind of Raygun's fault, but it's mostly this ballroom dancing Australian Federation thing. So I was right that Australia failed us, and they're yeah. the reason Again, why there won't I, be breakdancing in twenty twenty eight. Yeah. I had to disagree that Australia failed us. Maybe Australia failed itself. They certainly did not fail us. Well, we are not getting breakdancing in four years, so they did fail us. I don't think it's their fault. I I don't know. Seems like it might be. Did you watch the Olympics? Really took the L on this one. Did you watch any of the good breakdancers? I did. I did. I uh, I liked our guy Victor. I thought Mm -hmm. he was good. Yeah. Um, he got bronze, so that that was good. Um. Who was the Phil Wizard? Man, Phil Wizard out of Canada. Incredible. Is he the one that did like a million head spins or whatever? Yeah, I think he won gold. Yeah. Um, Would you say he did totally wizard? Yeah, he did do wizard. Uh, Like from Star Wars. Uh, But I thought all the Olympics were good. It was fun. I'm not like recommending the Olympics. I'm I'm recommending Sheriff Sheriff of Nottingham and yelling at Australia because I just wanted to do that. Well, that I can get behind. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so that's all I have. Diggins, what have you unearthed in the past two days? I am also doing something that is a thing I've done before, but I've also been recently replaying it, so it's not like I'm bringing it up out of nowhere. Um, I don't remember if I've wrecked one of these before. If I have, sorry, but it also must have been years ago. So who will remember? Not you. Yeah. Um, we don't have a wiki that catalogs all this yet. Uh, we started having one, but that person not gave up. Time. Yeah, it's fine. Which is fair. Good. This is fine. Please, this isn't a this isn't a dig. There's, I'm sure there's much better uses of your time. Mm-hmm. Cookie clicker, for example, probably better <laughs> use of your time. Yeah. yeah. Like. Uh, anyway, uh, I have been replaying uh, one of the Shadowrun games, uh, which uh, starting in 2014 and then going for a few years after that. Is that the uh, hedgehog with the gun? That's right. I've heard about him. He likes to run and like, likes to say rude things. Yeah, and there's going to be a new game with him the, by the end of this year. There better be. That's right. Uh, no, Shadowrun is an RPG setting uh, that's like a mixture of cyberpunk and fantasy, where it's like a cyberpunk future where mega corporations control everything and you hack into stuff and are cool cyberpunks. But also... Uh, part of the like alternate history of this world is that in 2012 uh, magic became real and like a bunch of people turned into orcs oh. and dwarves and elves and stuff. Yeah. And like and dragons then, woke up. And Will Smith is like, this is no law for Shrek or whatever. Right. Or whatever. <laughs> so fairy lives don't matter today. That was what that's from. <laughs> yeah, no, good. bright shows the much less <laughs> sensical option of orcs were always real. And this is just the world that inexplicably looks identical to our current world, except there's some orcs and and elves and stuff. And we made Shrek anyway, and it's about, it's like blackface, I guess, or something, whatever, (laughs) you know. Exactly. He's in a lot of trouble for that. This one chooses the much more sensible option of in in 2012, in the fictional timeline, magic became real. But the Mm -hmm. whole, but the world was mostly the same before that. Um, Anyway. So these games were are PC RPGs, so computer RPGs uh, that were made in that setting. Uh, there's three of them: Shadowrun Returns, Shadowrun Dragonfall, and Shadowrun Hong Kong. Returns is fine. Uh, Dragonfall is one of the best games I've ever played. Hmm. Uh, Hong Kong has its problems, but is also excellent. Uh, so. They're just, like, really well-written, like, well-designed turn-based RPGs uh, where you lead your team of cyberpunks on different missions. It's got, like, a mission-based structure where you're just, like, taking jobs from different people and, like, doing these missions, but with an overarching plot that you're, like, building towards. Um, They're super good. I like them a lot. They made me really interested in the setting. And have tried to learn the actual because it's originally a tabletop RPG like D and D. I've tried to learn it a couple times now. There are so many rules. Aww. There are so many rules. Nice. And this is coming from me. Like it's a lot, but one day I'll learn Shadowrun. 
Until then, I have these Shadowrun games, which are on Steam and are excellent. What about you, Nando? Anything to wreck? You know, uh, last couple of days, um, so last week I wrecked a comic that I still really like, like the Birds of Prey comic, not Birds of Prey. Well, I like the Birds of Prey comic too, but the um, Gotham City Sirens comic that just came out. But um, I like skipped over recommending, uh, like I, I mentioned the the series, The Power Fantasy um, by Kieran Gillen and Casper Wingard and uh, or Wijngard, W-I-J-N-G-A-A-R-D. I've never heard this spoken. But it's I would guess it. like Wingard in the way yeah. that like sign you don't pronounce the G. That makes sense. Uh, and uh, but yeah, so it was because I had picked up all those books and I read one of them, which was the the other one. Because to be fair, the um I knew this this power facing book was going to be good, but I had heard good things about Gotham City Sirens. I was like, I wonder what that is. Uh, but I hadn't read it yet. Uh, like I hadn't read Power Fantasy yet. So I finally read that. Uh, and it's issue one of six, so it just came out. Um, Kier Gillen is the guy that wrote a lot of good X-Men stuff recently, a lot of good Eternal stuff recently, like the good Eternal stuff. Um, the movie. He wrote, I know, it's 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 like, there's always, there's Neil Gaiman, who we all love, and did nothing wrong apparently. Uh, he wrote some okay Eternal stuff, and then Jack Kirby <sighs> obviously invented them all. But like, I do feel like they have severely not been written well in every other time. So I understand why the Neil Gaiman one was held up as the interesting one. But it's also not very good. Uh, this was the first time I've ever been like, oh, these are like characters. But anyway, that's what I'm recommending. Um, and yeah, the Neil Gaiman stuff is crazy. Uh, feel free to Google it. Um, but yeah, Kier Gillen wrote some of that, wrote uh, Die, uh, wrote Once a Future, which I love. Uh, just one of my favorite writers working. This is a book about an alternate history, kind of, or whatever. Uh, it's not super explained because uh, we're only one in. But the pitch for it is... There are, like, it's a world with superhero kind of beings, superpowered beings kind of coming from nowhere. Some, well, I guess we don't know where all of them are from. Some seem like they're from, like, kind of more, like, some seem more like X-Men and some seem more like Doctor Strange, but whatever. Um, but there's, like, a bunch of them that don't really matter. And then six of them that could destroy the world if they ever wanted to. And this is, it's movie or the, the, the thing that will eventually be a movie, but the book is about the power struggle between these six or like the piece that some of them are trying to keep with the other ones because they know like they all have, they're in this really weird, delicate balance. It's kind of like nuclear war uh, and like that, that sort of thing. But um, it's really interesting. And like, we've only really met three of them, although we talked to some of the other ones, but like the, uh, yeah, the world that paints is cool. And I do think the first issue has like an insane uh, ending that really like hooks you, but it's a really, really fun book. It's also, you know, gorgeous. I love the colors. Um, it's got a lot of pastel, not, well, not pastels. I don't know what you'd call it, but like, you know, a lot of oranges, reds, yellows, um, just nice. And you know what it has, it does, it does veer into the pastel, uh, category. So that is cool. But, uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be, I think this will go down as like the big hit of 2024. So I'm sure people are already on this, but it has only one issue, so if you wanted to jump on board with uh, Power Fantasy, now is the time. Um, and uh, yeah, next week, what are we doing next? What are we doing next week? We got some eye options. Question. We could do Harold and the Purple Crayon because it'll probably be on VOD. We could do the Union that Mark Wahlberg. What if he was a spy movie? Yeah, that is on Netflix. Oh, there was yeah. there was another movie that I think in this conversation we realized is also on Netflix already or something. Um, I thought it was that. I thought it was Taylor. Is Union. it that? That was last week. I was thinking like I thought today we also, or maybe I just learned about another movie that like is almost out, and I was like, get the fuck out. And then, I guess there's the Alien movie, um, but you know we're cowards. But maybe next when that's on I mean, VOD, I'll see it probably. Oh, you know what else? Twister is on VOD. Twisters. You mean Twisters? Already? Yeah. Twister yeah. has been on VOD for many years. And that's true. That's where I watched it. But yeah, Twisters is already on VOD, which is crazy, but that's just how it works these days. Um, I think I think we need to give us a break, and because we've been doing all these big, giant movies, let's do a shitty uh, direct-to-streaming spy movie. It's been at least a month since we've done one of those. and I, I love it. This is a the, Wahlberg. The listeners have been eating good for too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, it's only, you know, I think the rule should be we'll do whatever the big movie is, unless... There's a straight-to-streaming shitty spy movie, then we have to do that. 
Uh, and yeah, that's that's our niche this year, like Pinocchio that one year. Yeah, it <laughs> happens more than you'd expect. So, uh, yeah, we got the union should be on Netflix, I think, on Friday or probably or something. So Can't we'll wait. see. Maybe it'll be great. I haven't seen any reviews, so maybe it's, this is the one. But I wouldn't uh, expect that it is. Um, you know what? If it's been out for a while, we can always look on Rotten Tomatoes. So far, no Rotten Tomatoes for it. Ooh. It is not you know, out that's yet. That's a great sign. Yeah. You said it was out. No, no, I think it comes but, out on Friday. Like this weekend. Yeah, uh, it's like this weekend. Because they're doing all the press for it. I think the red carpet was yesterday It was yesterday. Or something. We yeah. could also do It Ends With Us. That will go well. Oh, my God. Speaking of red carpets, do you know the deal with this one, DJ? No. Apparently, the book is bad, so that's also fun. But, um, yeah, it seems like nobody likes the director or something. It's very interesting. Of course. Um, I don't think it's the director. I think it's one of the stars. Oh, is it? Oh, maybe. Well, are I you don't... talking? Uh, sorry, we might be talking about different things. I think I one think... of the stars is the director. Is this Justin Badleone or something? Yeah, I don't think he's the director. I think he might be. Oh wait, I'm an idiot. Which that is usually a good reason. That that sounds like the kind of person that people might not like. Some sort of actor, director, man. I was man. looking at the wrong movie when I was saying those words. Mm. Uh, he is the director. I'm just yeah. stupid. He is the director and the romantic okay, lead. Those are, you. I love that. Justin Baldoni. Justin Baldoni. Yeah, yeah well, apparently well, he was a big old creep. Yep. Apparently, you know what I heard, which is fun. The, remember the line in Deadpool where he's, uh, where nice Deadpool comes up and he's like, that's a uh, lady Deadpool. She's got a great figure and she just had a baby but you wouldn't even know it and then deadpool deadpool is like i don't think he could say that uh and then nice deadpool is like i identify as a feminist it's okay that is potentially because that's what that guy said to blake lively the real wife who ends up playing that character in in the movie so isn't that interesting mm. life imitates art um dj do you have anything to recommend to the fine people plug plug well he plug already things. did that yeah yeah, yeah. that one instead <laughs> Nah, just Roses and Rejections. Uh, not a uh, um, plug, but uh, a, a notice that our Survivor League football <gasps> season is coming back. Yeah. So our Eliminator Pool will be back. Winner gets to pick a movie for us to do at some point. Which we'll do um, eventually, as the people who are currently waiting on us to do movies know well. Whatever. Mm. Uh, just enter. It's free. And uh, yeah, well, uh, that should be fun. So look for details for that uh, in the coming weeks. Nice. Diggins, what about you? Anything to plug? Not really. What about you, Nando? Uh, videos coming out soon. Definitely going to make my, my Wiccan video is like a day late because my speed video is a day late. About but the religion? Are, that's right. Well, I mean, you know, there he is kind of the god of the Marvel Universe, maybe, by the end of his stories. So Ooh. there should be if there's not already. Um, but yeah, him and then Speed, the one that's the brother that's just Quicksilver that the comics keep forgetting exists. Both of those are being introduced into Marvel Snap either this week or the next week, so I have videos about them. And then another video or two on the Nando cut before probably the next Nando V Movies video. Uh, I will say, um, not necessarily a plug, because I feel like it'd be weird to plug it. Uh, but so I don't, I don't keep up with Roses and Rejections outside of the Roses and Rejections Twitter account, uh, because I do follow this and I'd like, learning about the bachelors it seems like you guys there's a bachelor right now who is a real block of wood uh and i really enjoyed this Only do you know who one. i'm talking about dj no is his name sam is oh he... oh <laughs> it's fun yeah, yeah. i like it's... that um and... he's a big old dummy yeah i, I do i do enjoy the, the bachelor the... no way. i know right oh no it's it's even more <laughs> crazy yeah yeah he he, the 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 bachelorette asks him like, "Tell me why you think I'm special," and then he like stammers for two minutes and then just starts making out with her. <laughs> so they put this on television, and she accepted that answer. I uh, did, did didn't satisfy her. She, she had to eliminate him if you could believe it. Oh no, uh, but yeah, that There's was just fun. No justice in this world. How did this quite? How, Nando, how did this cross you on Twitter? Oh, Rose and Rejections, yeah. like your Twitter account you. retweeted it. Um, who oh, manages that? Is okay. it you or Michelle? It's Michelle. Okay, yeah. <laughs> There's so, no I, I don't watch Bachelor, but I do read these tweets and 
some of them are you guys, but some of them are just by other people. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like a funny, dumb guy or something. She gets very good engagement. Uh, sometimes Jesse Palmer even retweets some of the stuff, so that's fun. I don't know who that is, but... he He's the host. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Nice. Um, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are all waiting for answers with words. It seems fun. I like him. Um, yeah. I hope he gets a spinoff or something. Uh, that <laughs> Sam guy. But, um, but, yeah, so next week... The Royal, what the fuck's it called? Reunion? The Union, there we go. Yeah, yeah. the Union. Awesome. They, have to, they have to come up with a new name for whatever the you know bullshit spy organization is. Every time they make one of these, they are running out of words. But next week, that. Until then, I've been at Nando Movies on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This Is An Odd Name. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. We love you. Woo! And then claptrap dances and break dances and shit. Remember that on the credits where he's like, I'm doing the moonwalk. I love being silly and dancing. Wait, the credits are supposed to be ready. Whoa! So incredible. <laughs>